week for those who are not around last week please please I want you to get the teaching I shared a very powerful mystery I'll recap on it very quickly and then we will pray hallelujah such an anointing in this place I seated on the throne he is Yahweh he is seated on Hallelujah. One of the greatest blessings personally upon my life aside from my love and the revelation of the Holy Spirit to me one of the greatest assets in my life is a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Please listen, pay attention. Please give me a moment. The mysteries of the kingdom. I told us last week that a mystery is a secret code of operation. Witchcraft works by mysteries. The kingdom works upon mysteries. Success is not a mistake. Deliverance is not a mistake. Healing is not a mistake. Favor is not a mistake. Breakthrough is not a mistake. All through from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is full of men who dare to understand the principles of the kingdom. And on the strength of that understanding, they did exploits. And I just want to share one principle that the Lord has been putting upon my heart. Listen, God began with us last week. If you understand this singular principle that I'm teaching you, Many of you, that will be your gift for the miracle service. And you can literally walk out of here and guarantee that you will be a champion. Hallelujah. I began to share with us what I call the dominion mystery of tithing. The dominion mystery of tithing. Please pay attention. The dominion mystery of tithing. That there is a relationship between a tenth portion and a man's dominion upon the surface of the earth. Many preachers have taught the controversial subject of tithing and they have taught it only within the circumference of finances. And whilst that is true, there is more to it. There are so many of us here that are stealing from our future and authorizing the powers of darkness to make and keep us victims. But tonight I pray that the light will shine. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis. How that when God made the garden of Eden. Watch this. The Bible says God put Adam there. And he gave him an instruction. He said. Of every tree in this garden you may freely eat. I give you access. Not ownership. I told you in the kingdom we don't own things. Those who own things are rebels in the kingdom. No man is an owner in the kingdom. Everyone only has access. We are stewards. High blood pressure is because we own things. Stroke and hypertension. When you own things, you worry about them. When you own things, you are concerned about keeping them. God never gives a man ownership. He gives every man access. The prodigal son had access, but he wanted ownership. From the day ownership started in his life, lack started. He became a victim of the very situations that he was head over until he returned back to access. And so the Bible tells us that Adam was given an instruction that in the very garden of Eden, there was a tree. Is that true? And he said of every tree you may eat, but this one is my portion. 
leave it to me. The key to your dominion in this garden is not just prayer and fasting. There were no Bible studies in the garden of Eden. There were no apostles, no prophets, no miracle service. Only an instruction that obeying it will guarantee dominion. There were no churches in the garden of Eden. Only the presence of God and a heart willing to obey. And he says, this is the tight of the garden. Keep this tight. It is my designated portion. For as long as you honor my instruction and keep this portion, nothing will stop you from having access. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan knew this. And so when he came and beguiled Eve, he made them to touch of the tight. The moment man touched of the tight, that very factor that made creation respond to him was lifted. And at once, everything began to fight him. The very leaves he was supposed to dominate now became his covering. He started running and we see fear. We see lies. We see intimidation because of one instruction. Violating the designated portion. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Then the Bible tells us, watch this. The Bible tells us how that he was sent out of a land of abundance and supply and peace and prosperity and goodness out of Eden to a land of struggle. The earth was caused for his sake. There was no longer dominion over the earth. God never caused man. God caused the earth. And by causing the earth, creation also responded to that. Watch this. I told us last week that there is an ability of God that comes upon a man that makes everything under the sun work in his favor. This is what the Bible calls the blessing. The blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that makes everything, including problems, challenges, everything to work for you. When that ability of the Spirit is upon you, no matter what happens in your life, it must work for you. It's a law. Let me tell you what it means to be cursed. To be cursed does not mean that you are carrying just an evil pronouncement. No. A curse is an atmosphere. A curse is like an anointing in a negative sense upon your life that makes creation fight you. Everything fights you opportunities fight you friends fight you a blessing fights you when a man who is cursed stands his atmosphere not only fights him but it fights anybody who wants to help him are you getting the point now so the idea of course is not just about what happens in covenants the earth has been authorized by a divine pronouncement to fight anyone who dishonors the designated portion. Listen, let me tell you something. This system we are working in is already cost. It's a cost system. There is nothing you can do about it. Your only key is to exempt yourself. And there is a law. It's an ancient mystery of exemption that exempts you from the inevitable vicissitudes of life. A job cannot exempt you. An educational qualification cannot exempt you. Nothing aside from the operation of the laws of the spirit can exempt you. Now the Bible tells us about Abraham who was an idol worshiper that came from a land called Or of the Chaldeans. In Genesis chapter 12 the Bible tells us how that God told Abraham come out of your kindred and your father's house to a land that I will show you. He began to propose to Abraham how that he would bless him and told Abraham I will make you the landlord of the earth. Something will happen upon your life that will make the earth to become your possession. And then in chapter 14 when he went to capture Lot and bring him back the Bible says he met a strange man called Melchizedek who was a king of an ancient city of peace called Salem. The ancient name for Jerusalem. The Hebrew is Jerusalem. An ancient city of peace. A man according to Hebrews with no origin, no beginning, no end. No father, no mother. 
a man who was operating in the office of the priesthood and the bible says when abraham encountered this priest a transaction happened between two of them please follow me the bible says abraham took the tenth of all and gave unto melchizedek do you believe that he took a tenth of all gave unto melchizedek when he gave a tenth of all to melchizedek melchizedek received it and did what he activated the blessing he said blessed be abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth and at once the earth started working abimelech wanted to take his wife that is a bad situation is that not true but because of the blessing abimelech released the wife and gave him gifts gave him gifts a man one moment you want to take away his wife another moment you not only become his friend you honor him with gifts there is a mystery that governs this creation do you know what we call bad luck you know what we call misfortune misfortune is not just an issue of witchcraft like ancestry misfortune is the resultant effect of taking from the designated portion there is already an authorization whether there are witches in your family or not that every time you touch god's portion you violate a law the earth starts reacting to it at once are you getting blessed now the destiny of abraham was opened up on account of this portion jacob who was the um, son from the lineage of Abraham. Watch this. Jacob worked for Laban. Is that not true? Laban cheated Jacob. Right? He was about to give him a daughter and he said, I will work seven years. And then he exchanged Rachel with Leah and he worked for another seven years. Then he had been with him six years. Twenty years of oppression from a man. But it still didn't matter because something was upon him. And he said, alright, this is what will happen. Take your spotted calf. I will take calves that are not spotted. The Bible tells us like begets like. And Jacob said, from the calves that are not spotted. If they give birth, we will watch. If the unspotted calf give birth to spotted children, they are my own. And the Bible says he took ordinary stick. It was not an ordinary stick, brothers and sisters. And the cows who come to mate, just looking at a stick, a white cow or a, 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 a spotless um, animal will now give birth to another animal that is spotted. It is not just creation was working for him. When, so even if you cheated him, something happened. And the cows how the animal started giving birth and Laban said my goodness what is happening leave my presence that is a man who has honored God with his portion today I want to show you a dimension of the dominion mystery of Titan watch this do you know why many people never walk in kingdom authority many churches are barren producing posters now i'm not against that but i'm saying every week hand bills every week running around scrounging for members threatening people with causes let me tell you why because there is a law that they are violating consistently and god is no respecter of person the laws of the spirit has equal value in any territory equal value Is God speaking to us tonight? When Moses died, please look up everyone. When Moses died, the Bible tells us how that he told Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. And now Joshua had a responsibility to throw down Jericho. And he was afraid because the Bible tells us that Jericho was a mighty city. Do you know the fence of Jericho? According to scripture, five chariots could stand on the fence. How will you break through that fence? That is a challenge. But he said, I will show you something. Watch this. Five verse one of Joshua. Open our eyes, oh God. 
and let men and women walk away from their chains forever. Five verse one, and it came to pass. It'll be a fast reading. When all the kings of the Amorites who were on the side of Jordan, westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts melted; neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Now watch this. They were about to challenge Jericho. And when the other kings heard of the mighty things that God did, the kings tried to decipher what is it about Israel that makes them always win battles? What is it that makes them, whether you have a greater armory than them, is insignificant. They will throw you down. There was a mystery of dominion they were working with. And God was about to introduce Joshua. Joshua was just a young ruler taking over from Moses. And this is what he told him. Let's see the mystery. Let's take chapter 5 verse 2. 5 verse 2. Are you there? Now let's look at it. It says, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Do what? He said, Make sharp knives. He's about to teach him how to continue in the steps of Moses. Make sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Let's continue. Three. And Joshua made sharp knives and circumcised all the children at the heel of the four skins. And then, and this is the reason why he circumcised them. All the people that came out of Egypt were males, even all the men of war. They died in the wilderness after they came out of Egypt. Five. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, when they came forth out of Egypt were not circumcised. Are you seeing that now? All those who had been winning and making Israel make progress, it was because they were circumcised. But he said, these guys are not circumcised. And if you don't circumcise them, something dangerous is about to happen to you. Verse 6. It says, for the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness and all of that and all of that. Let's go to verse 7. And their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. Verse 8. Watch this. And it came to pass when they were done circumcising all the people, they abode in their places. Watch this. Joshua is afraid of conquering Jericho and the walls that are before him and God said no problem heaven wants to come into your affairs but you need to authorize them it says circumcise the people the moment the circumcision finished verse 9 let's see what happened and the Lord said to Joshua this day I have what rolled away the reproach of Egypt my goodness so all the while they were carrying the reproach because they were not circumcised he said the moment a circumcision, a separation, a cutting away happened. He said this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Wherefore the name of the place to this day is called Gilgal. Go to verse 13. Let's see something mysterious that happened. Verse 13. Everyone look up. Manda kaparato kasitaya. And it came to pass, listen, Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes immediately after circumcision. He saw a strange man who came and said, I'm ready to partner with you. You have invited the realm of the spirit into your affair. That man had been there all the while, but there was no access. He said, you need help. You can't conquer Jericho by your strength. The realm of the spirit wants to partner with you, but the secret is the circumcision. The moment it happened, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and he saw a man with a sword. And he went to him and said, are you for us or against us? Next verse. And he said, nay, but I come. I'm also a warrior, but I fight in the spirit. The same way you guys are warriors. I am also a captain. I lead a battalion. 
I help men on earth who invite us to come. You are seated on the throne. And he said, and Joshua fell on his face and did worship. And he said unto him, What saith my Lord to his servant? Next verse. Watch this. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off your foot. From the place you stand this holy ground. And Joshua did so. Next verse. Now Jericho was straightly short. Watch this. Let me just save our time. Are you noticing what is happening here? Immediately after the circumcision, he saw the captain. Then the captain started revealing to him the strategy. This is how you will take Jericho. Otherwise, they would have died there. Because physically speaking, Jericho was insurmountable. Now watch this. Your tithe in the spirit is similar to this spiritual circumcision. Your tithe is an authorization for the realm of the spirit to come into your affairs and partner with you. This is the reason why even human beings for men, men because men are the carriers of the seed, men are instructed to be circumcised. Why not? Sir? How can a man come from heaven? We believe children are the heritage of the Lord. But you will give birth to a man and he will still go through circumcision. Are you getting the point now? Because the moment circumcision happens, the realm of the spirit comes. Come, come. Watch this. You are on your own. Minding your business. Trying to win the war of life by yourself. And God is saying you are doing this thing sensually. You are doing this thing carnally. You never will be able to do it. It says, honor me with your tithe. And the moment that happens, there is already a spiritual arsenal that comes to work with you. And that which you have becomes supernatural. Not just natural. Not just natural. It becomes supernatural. The reason why there is a crowd of people inside and outside. Look at this. Right to the road. Right everywhere. Let me tell you the reason why. It is not just because this is a great ministry. It is because we have beckoned on the assistance of the supernatural. There are some people standing outside who are even shocked that they are here. When you see them, you imagine there is no amount of invitation you would have given them to come but for the realm of the spirit. He said, I am come as a captain. In other words, the same way you fight, there are spiritual arsenals to wait in. You have been trying to fight every battle in your life just by using physical arsenals. And the Lord is saying, the earth is fighting you. When you return my designated portion, you authorize the realm of the spirit to begin to help you. This ministry, by the grace of God, we are faithful never for any reason and by any means under the sun will we touch God's portion. Not out of fear, but out of revelation. My life as a person, God is my witness that I honor him and that portion that belongs to him. This is why I'm dangerously protected. It's not about a man. No, 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 no. Dangerously protected. I share with you a simple but powerful mystery. When Pastor Jax was sharing and he said, they picked somebody from his position and makes him a deputy manager deputy manager with interviews on phone you went to school and you are intelligent is that how it is done let me tell you the blessing breaks the rules for you it breaks the rules for you yes when men say it cannot be done it breaks the rules the problem is that we are too carnal we have intellectualized life life is spiritual say it after me one more time Shout it like you believe it. Life is spiritual. All that you see is not all that there is. Those who are controlling this world are those who have an advantage of the spirit. You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. 
You are Yahweh. You are seated on the throne. Tonight, God is asking you, are you ready to stop struggling in life? Let me tell you, struggling is a cause. If you ever convince yourself that God is the author of your struggle, I am telling you now, struggling is a cause. It's a cause from the pit of hell. You will never be able to serve God if all you are doing in your life is looking for money. Because money is not missing. You were never supposed to look for it. Hallelujah. You will never be able to serve God if you allow this mammon, the spirit that takes the heart of men away from God to begin to pursue other things. Trying to look for earthly relevance. There are people who want to build a house but they want to build it physically by putting blocks. You will die trying to build that house because there is a spiritual dimension to everything. Give us James chapter 2 verse 26. I hope we'll be able to find it. I'm reserving it for next week. By the way, next week Friday here is going to be a powerful vigil. Hallelujah. Yes. Next week is going to be a vigil. It's going to be a time of prayer and worship. We're inviting guests from all over. Now watch this. The Lord showed me this mystery and it changed my life. I shared it in Abuja. I was reserving it to start the teaching next week. But your hunger has tempted me to go to that scripture. And let's, let's touch it a bit. Paul. Watch this. Oh, sorry, James. The apostle, James, was teaching on faith and works. Corresponding action. Is that true? And while he was teaching on faith and works... He just veered off and brought a powerful principle. In an attempt to explain faith and work, he, comp he, he compares it with something. He says, for as the body without what? A spirit. Now, all of you watch this guy. The only reason that I can interact with him is because there is a spirit. Is that true? If the spirit leaves this body, what happens? I will reject the body. All of you will reject the body. Are you getting me? And we will have to bury him because it is a body. Though complete, it has no spirit. Are you getting me? Now, I want you, media, please keep it there. Keep it there so that we'll... I want you to remove the word as and just read just the first line to the comma. Are you ready? Want to read? One more time. One more time. For the body without the spirit is dead. It didn't say for the body of man. For any material thing that does not have a spiritual force backing it, it is dead. For any material business without a spirit equivalent is dead. For any church without a spirit agency backing it is like a dead body. It says for a body without a spirit. So the nation of Israel was like a body without a spirit. And he said, Joshua, you will lose. You need the spirit component. And circumcision authorized the spirit. When the realm of the spirit came, they said, let's go. We can take Jericho. And with one shout, this was what David knew. That as big as Goliath was, he was a body without a spirit. The other people were looking from the three dimensional realm. Ah, Goliath was shouting, and David looked at him. He said, I see a body, but there is no covenant, no spirit. What is the force in the spirit backing you? And Goliath said, Am I a dog? Even if you fight me, honor me. And David said, You are joking. You don't know who is talking. I'm not alone. You are an uncircumcised. See the word again. See the word again. You are an uncircumcised. I would have been afraid of you. I would have considered your threat if you were circumcised. Where is the ties that connects you to the realm of the spirit? And he said, I'm circumcised. I may be weak, but there is a government that backs me. When you get this key, 
my brother you will run as if satan does not exist i promise you i promise you this you can jump around for deliverance you can hop from everywhere but the body without a spirit is dead so your boss in the office knows this and there is a spirit that backs his chair you just get up with your your certificate and sit on that chair and it becomes too hot because all in that office is not just a chair it's a throne there are spirits back in it that's why the bible said they that knew their god they that have connected with a spiritual advantage they shall be strong they shall do exploits rise from the realm of being natural and tap into the supernatural realm where the realm of the spirit assists you and your life will be nothing short of a wonder how many people listen i have given up on trying to do things by my strength because i know i'm wasting my time the body in the same way the next time somebody stands and threatens you that is a body without a spirit see no matter what talk people talk i only consider you if you are connected spiritually are you getting what I'm saying? I will deal with you. The body without the spirit is dead. I will make sure you leave this job. The body without the spirit is dead. You only pay attention to a man who has risen beyond the three-dimensional realm because there is an assistance, whether demonic or whatever. Are you getting me? circumcision is that key there are many who continue ah we have a an extent we are going to be touching on the matters of the kingdom next week friday i'll be showing you certain secrets of the kingdom that it will make you almost like a drunk man you will get up and jump and shout tonight all we are doing in this miracle service is by an ancient mystery crying and asking heaven and say lord behold the sick people and already in this place there are more angels the arsenals in the realm of the spirit are more than what you know that's always what happens whenever you see me come to sit down i smile around the stage i would have died of hypertension if i'm responsible for your healing but we have made arrangement already we are covered oh yes absolutely we are covered heaven is jealous jealous to protect his own because god's designated portion listen when you steal your tithe you have not only destroyed your destiny you have stolen from your children every time you don't tithe just know that your firstborn is in trouble if you don't do it again you are affecting your children because he said i will pour you a blessing you will not have room in other words no matter how greedy you are your lifetime cannot exhaust it so when you steal you have endangered the destiny of your children god's portion if anyone ever told you tithing is all about money that person lied to you or was sincerely wrong tithing has nothing to do with money it's the law of open heavens let me surprise you if your tithe is 10,000 and you carry 1 million and give charity foundation and you don't tithe that 10,000 you are operating under a closed heaven don't convince yourself that because you gave 1 million the heavens is open it is called due process I'll teach you next week there is a protocol to spiritual things are you getting my point tithing is what opens your heavens and then anything you do under that open heavens will prosper if you like carry one billion give charity organization give for the building of church if you are not a tighter i guarantee you the bible says your heaven shall be brass and your earth iron all of them are conductors of heat get set for heat in your life when the heaven is open if not if for nothing we know there is ventilation fresh air the wind comes but when your heaven is brass 
and your earth is iron many of us here no matter what prayer happens in this that's why we took the communion the devourer is authorized to destroy anyone who is not spiritually circumcised the devourer is not a demon the devourer is a principality even jesus christ acknowledged them that's why he said he is the head of principalities it destroys men's lives on legal basis this earth is too wicked for you to allow chance no i pray for people all the time people with cancers hiv tuberculosis communicable diseases imagine if i refuse to be faithful i would die like a chicken because most times i lay hands on people and there are medical doctors here they know that some of these things are physically not healthy but i'm circumcised my goodness you invoke my name in a shrine both the invoker the invokee and the ordinance it they will burn to ashes ashes no matter how mad a man is he doesn't enter fire by mistake he can cross the road and you say he's a madman but when he sees fire he fears off when heaven backs you let me tell you your life becomes a wonder even to you this ministry is a wonder to everyone not just because we are so smart we are just stupid enough to involve the realm of the spirit because by the arm of flesh shall no man pray you reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Mighty on your own. You are 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 mighty in this place. 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 You are mighty in my life. 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 hallelujah we are going to pray just two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister you are mighty in this place they that are with us are greater 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 Mantos there shall no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life prayer point number one oh god by the blood i cry for mercy where i've allowed the devourer i have stolen from my time your designated portion i've allowed the devil deceive me that the tithe is a gimmick by preachers now i realize and i ask for your mercy lift your voice and pray inside and outside Lift your voice. Your tithe 
is your spiritual circumcision. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Ask for fresh grace. Oh. And make a vow that you will never miss out on your tithe again. Make, make a vow. Not by fear. assurance and I pledge the name of the Lord upon this if you take what I've shared tonight for many of you this is your secret is your password to a mysterious level of lifting a level of lifting that will surprise you as much as surprise those who are your spectators God's portion the time his designated portion that makes creation to walk in your favor makes your enemies to walk in your favor mysterious but powerful consistent hallelujah just one more prayer and then we'll trust to see the mighty things that the Lord is going to do I want you to lift your voice in one minute we are going to pray in the next five minutes listen I want you to confront the gates of your destiny and I want you to pray and say you must open up this night. Lift your voice. It's the seventh month. The gates of my destiny must open up by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost.
Alléluia. 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 Let me just add one more prayer. Because I see the angels of the Lord already moving. Let me just add one more prayer. Listen. I want you to pray. Listen. There are giants on every mountain. Every one of us is holding a prayer request. Because there is an aspect of your life the devil has refused to let you go. But tonight, I want you to lift up your voice and prophesy to the heavens and challenge those powers and say, I must go tonight. Lift your voice. Inside and outside. Cry. I must walk away. That carrying out disease must die today. That cancer must die today. That HIV must go today. That barrenness must go today. That stagnation must go today. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Pray. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Now, before I begin ministering, please, can I have that family if they are here? The family that came with the poison person. Are they here? Please, let's save time. If they are here, just signify by wave of hand and then run out here quickly. There's a lot to do tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While that is happening, I want everybody to follow up on your prayer request. If you are here to write, please one minute so that when we begin to flow we just move and we don't stop so you have one minute while you are praying in tongues just write your prayer requests very quickly so that when it's time to pass it you just pass it very fast make sure you don't keep silent Write the issues that have threatened you and watch the God of heaven turn them into testimonies. What can I do? I can leave without you. I can leave without you. So tell me what can I do? I can leave without you.
name of your son Jesus Christ we pray that there will be a reign of miracles a reign of deliverances a reign of impartations a reign of breakthroughs we forcefully advance tonight we compel gates to be open we compel doors to be open we compel every handwriting of darkness to give way in this place tonight and we declare that this atmosphere is completely under the influence of the Holy Spirit and that everybody here within this vicinity comes under the influence of the Spirit Lord that no one will walk out of this place without a touch of God hallelujah hallelujah now I'm going to begin to minister to us and while I prayed for this in the course of the week again and again I kept seeing please pay attention can I have strings strings strings, strings? hallelujah I kept seeing again and again spirits watch this spirits leeching onto people this is what I kept seeing like a man sitting on a man's shoulder I saw this over many people and I said Lord what is the meaning of this and the Lord began to re to reveal to me that these are the spirits that cause setbacks upon the lives of men and upon the lives of families and the Lord said when I come up he said the first thing I should do is dislodge those powers dislodge those powers I saw them like a man like a child will sit down on the shoulder of another bringing a resistance to your destiny and I'm about to pray for you right now there are so many people under the sound of my voice so many people under the sound of my voice they must go heaven is here to assist us lift your hands everyone inside and outside There will be such mighty deliverances outside by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I even see someone um, uh, suffering from severe migraine. But then that migraine you think is just sickness. We are about to make a shout, brothers and sisters. This shout it's like the sling of David it looks ordinary but there is a circumcision upon it it's a shout that rises beyond the earth realm it's a shout that rises beyond the intelligence of men it's a shout that is like a battle sound to the angelic it's like a battle sound because your destiny must open up right now there will be mighty deliverances mighty deliverances hallelujah I'm going to pray for us and then at the count of three we are going to shout that name Jesus my goodness I sense the anointing of the spirit heavy the power of God will fall upon many of you in a mighty way and you will see this spirit some of you are already feeling uncomfortable it's the power of God especially many outside there will be mighty deliverances lift your hands now thank you Jesus father in the name of your son I pray right now and I sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that the fire of the spirit oh restrain not your hand oh mighty one we pray that you arise as a man of war there are destinies at the mercy of your touch i pray that by this shout oh god there be a visitation that by this shout oh god everyone here under any spirit help them please help them bring them out everyone here under any influence as we shout let fire catch them and visit their foundations and I command every power that at this shout you will let God's people go inside and outside one two three shout that name I command witchcraft 
powers of darkness right now right now in the name of jesus inside and outside inside and outside inside and outside the fire of god is falling on people falling on people i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft i cause witchcraft, I cause witchcraft. in the name of jesus lift your hands malatata i'm seeing altars on fire that's what i see in the spirit please bring them out altars on fire one more time we're going to shout physically many of you will feel the fire physically physically right now in the name of jesus one two three jesus! oh yes that's fire that's fire that's fire of the holy ghost I'm seeing a family in the vision of the Lord. Everyone in that family has been tied down by witchcraft. Lord, where is that person in this place? Inside and outside. Right now as I speak, the power of God comes upon that person. Right now, wherever that person is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, the power of God comes upon that person. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your voice in one minute. This is what the Lord is telling me. As we begin to pray, miracles will start happening. Lift your voice and break every chain holding you down. Go ahead. This is what God is telling me. Please lift 
your hands lift your hands i hear my spirit families families god is stepping into families there are altars there are altars over families that are about to be broken as you are standing right now god is going to be visiting your family at that shout again inside and outside make sure you are participating inside and outside we are going to shout that name as you shout the name of jesus families i see altars on fire are you ready now father any family under the yoke of bondage as they shout this name let there be a visitation one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. And ask him for a visitation again. Something serious is happening in this place. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands i'm hearing marital spells marital spells please lift your hands listen hear me something mighty is about to happen here the lord is ministering to me that there are people who there are spells tying down their marriages whether single or married right now lift your hands as i begin to speak the wind i see like a wind a whirlwind moving across this auditorium oh. it will catch up with some people right now where are they oh god visit them right now in the name of jesus one more time we will shout that name wherever they are one, Two, three, Jesus! Spells, spells, be broken, 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 I'm hearing a name Dorcas. Dorcas, a miracle is coming. Dorcas, an altar is on fire. And I'm hearing the Lord telling me a miracle. Dorcas. Dorcas. Come and stand here. Hallelujah. 
Who is Israel? I'm hearing a name Israel. Israel, the Lord is ministering to me. Tonight, he must let you go. Let you go. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is showing me a woman. You are here. You had a miscarriage. There is a woman here who had a miscarriage. It's like you had a child and you lost the baby. And the Lord is telling me, please help them, those under the anointing, so that we don't, this place is not rowdy. Listen, let me tell you something. The anointing of the spirit does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The anointing does not make the difference. Without the anointing, we are just making noise here. But by the anointing, and I'm telling you this, no matter where you are, whether you are inside here or outside or right at the back, I want you to connect because God is visiting you. And every one of you must have a touch. Dorcas. Where is your mother, my dear? Huh? I'm not busy, Zaria, sir. No, I'm not saying. She's where is she? Mina, Niger She's in Mina. Yes, we have to pray because the Lord is bringing a mighty breakthrough for your family. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Hold my hands, Father. Change the story of this lady by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I hold your hands, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord set you free. Madam, look at me. Where is your husband? At home. Huh? He's at home. Why didn't he come with you? Because there is a breakthrough that is a portion for him in this meeting. Amen. But I'm going to pray for you. Yes, you believe that? Yes, sir. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because this is delay. Yes. I'm seeing delay in your yes, family. Sir. Serious yes, delay. Yes, sir. It's even becoming an issue of argument between you and your husband. Yes, sir. I'm seeing two of you arguing. Yes, sir. But the Lord is saying he's bringing rest to your yes, family. Sir. This Amen, sir. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Father, let there be rest. Rest for her. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are doctors. Where is your mother, my dear? You. She stays in Kaduna. Why? The same way you are crying is how I'm seeing your mother crying in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is ministering to me. The Lord is saying, Why wouldn't she cry when the load is too much on her? Look at me. Like we shared, tell your mother to get back into faithfulness in tithing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And even you yourself otherwise you will keep seeing repeated hardship but hold my hands in the name of jesus lord bring rest to this lady bring rest to her in the name of jesus christ Can, where is the woman that had a miscarriage there is a woman that had a miscarriage and the lord is asking me to minister to her we may not be able to minister to everybody but there is there is someone please make sure you don't sit back the lord is ministering to me about that person so that we'll just we'll just pray for her. Dogara, Dogara. I'm hearing a name. Dogara, Dogara. Who is Dogara? You. Your name is Dogara. Yes, sir. Where's your dad? He's at home. In Kaduna. He's, he's at home. In Kaduna. We have to pray for him. What I'm seeing will never, if they are permitting anything, please and please, maybe carry them out of We're well, about to pray, please, don't worry. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now over and I cause that spirit that wants to bring accident. In the name of Jesus, it will not come to pass. We cancel it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Madam, I want to pray for you. The way I'm holding your hands, that's the way the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's going to begin to hold your hands and that he will cause you to move forward in your life. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration to your life and he's bringing joy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be. You are the one with miscarriage. Why did you sit back? Now come. There's nothing embarrassing about it, madam. This is a family because I'm seeing another one happening and we must pray for you. Yes, sir. 
it's happening again. Yes. We have to cancel it. Oh, yes, huh? yes, it's not a normal thing that you are having miscarriage yes, because there is a spirit that oppresses you. Yes, huh? yes, and that's what is responsible for that miscarriage. It's not just about praying, praying and saying, pray for me. Okay, you understand? Yes, it takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You will give birth to a baby boy. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this family will experience your touch. Madam, lay, lay your hands on your stomach. Father, there will not be miscarriage again in the name of Jesus. That's right. I see the spirit. Let her go right now. Right now, release her completely. I set her free. Lord, you showed me a baby boy. Confirm your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here? Dorcas, your name is Dorcas too. Your name is Dorcas too. Your daughter's name. Just stand and pray for all of you. You are Israel. I'm going to pray for you. Are you a student? We have to pray because I'm seeing the devil attacking your academics. Attacking your academics very seriously. So that they'll not begin to tell you your scripts are missing. Huh? And then they will implicate you in the malpractice. The Lord is asking me to minister to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that this is broken. You're all Israel's. And I'll pray with you. Let her go right now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Release her right now and let her go. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking at this woman but in the realm of the spirit all I'm seeing is a large snake. That's all I'm seeing moving around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where's the usher? Ushers. Lay your hands on this lady. Just what I mean. I curse that spirit. You must release her right now in the name that is above all names there is no hiding place the light of God is against you in the name of Jesus Christ there is no hiding place for you by the blood of Jesus Christ you must release this woman is a spirit of death let her go right now in the name of Jesus Christ father may they experience your touch in the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience your touch. In the name of Jesus Christ. May they experience, I curse that spirit. Let her go. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your baby's name. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is liberty for this boy. There's liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. There's liberty. Hallelujah. Now, all those who were brought out here under the anointing, I want to I want to speak to them now. Don't worry. Everyone out here, I speak to the spirits that are tormenting you. You know my voice, I represent the most high. At the count of three, leave them and go. Right now, one, two, go, go, go. Out of there. Out. Out of the land. Out now. Never to be told. At your Lord, live your life. Live your destiny. Restoration of virtue. Of grace. I cost that spirit from its foundation. I cost it from the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. All those who are trusting God for jobs, lift your hands. I see a strange anointing in this place. Please, don't withhold your hand. Don't withhold your hand. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Sister, you looking at me. Rejoice. I see an appointment letter given to you. You, this lady looking at me. I'm talking to her. You are turning back. You. Come, 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 come. I see an appointment letter given to you. There will be mighty miracles of jobs. Hallelujah. Come. This is the person I'm talking about. Because I was praying, and before I would even start, I saw them handing over to you something that looks like an appointment letter. Right? You believe me? 
you believe me you will see it and you will stand before God's people to testify in the name of Jesus Christ I pray the Lord says I should tell you he's rolling away your reproach madam the reproach of many years is being rolled away in this season that's what the Lord is saying I should tell you the reproach of many years is being rolled away I'm seeing like a baller that's what I'm seeing a trash place where they pour dirt and I'm seeing a new seed shooting out and that's what is that's that's like a type of your destiny and the Lord is saying I should tell you he's rolling away the reproach from your life in the name of Jesus lift your hands and let's release miracle job if you don't believe in it put down your hand I command you by the blood of Jesus you foul spirit you have oppressed this body in the name of Jesus I break your covenant I break your ordinance there is a strong spirit that has been oppressing this lady it's not just her can you look at how many people holding one tiny lady I curse you now I curse you I curse you by the God of heaven and I curse you by my office in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I curse that power let her go now right now release her destiny release her family now by the blood of the eternal covenant she's free go release her now in the name of Jesus Christ let me tell you something listen listen people of God don't think we are playing games here I know you may see some of the things happening these are the powers that have tied down men's life it's not solved by counseling you are just moving in the physical yet in the realm of the spirit you are bound we are not embarrassed we are never embarrassed to set people free because that's what Jesus said there's got to be a way of setting people free hallelujah father jobs now in the name that is above all names I want you to receive it as a prophecy over your life Lord I declare everyone called jobless here by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now by the favor of God I terminate joblessness right now anyone who has applied for any job I compel them to call you Amen. I compel them to call your loved ones Amen. I compel them to favor you Amen. hallelujah do we have anyone here called Agnes Agnes I'm hearing a name Agnes the Lord is ministering to me about one Agnes we'll begin to pray for the sick shortly Agnes I'm hearing the name Agnes God is ministering to me he wants to bring deliverance to the family of Agnes do we have anyone there Agnes Your name is Agnes. Your name too. Your family member. Okay, I'm going to pray for you. We we'll begin to pray for the sick. After this, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring breakthrough for this family. You showed me that you're visiting this family. Go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whoever is Agnes in your family, let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to begin to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing a very serious situation here. There's someone here with a swollen leg. I don't know who that person is. Your leg, mysteriously, 
paining you and it looks it's, and, and, and it's like swollen this is what i see in the vision that the lord is showing me who is that person your leg is swollen where is it which of the legs look what look if if the devil you remember i told you this a body without the spirit look what is happening to this girl and then you just come and marry her because you think you want a wife are you seeing that is is if it can look at one two three four five people holding one person imagine what it would do to someone's destiny I say this without a sense of cynicism many of the people that God is setting free attend churches every week look we need to restore the power of God in our churches and stop playing games with God because God's idea is not just for one platform hallelujah swollen legs no 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 don't you don't you don't have to madam you too. your legs for how long what's the situation with her is her leg swollen okay hold on she can't walk baby how are you hallelujah please help us with the mic who brought her okay no it's okay it's okay what's your name Annie, your name is Anne. Agnes, Alice, your name is Alice. You can't walk. You can walk, but your leg is bent. Oh my goodness, look at such an innocent lady. Lord, have mercy on this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go back when I begin to pray for the sick and we let them come out. I'm just ministering to special cases. Leg, your leg. All of you who had a dream in a dream is like something was shot it's like i don't know if it was an arrow i'm seeing something that looks like a dream and something was shot on your legs if the person is not here i'm seeing someone who had that dream it's like i don't know if it was like a gun or something or an or a, 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 a sharp object i know that it was it's like it was shot to your leg Something beats me when I was sleeping. I just broke up and screamed. So blood was coming out of my legs. I, I'll pray for you, but this one I'm seeing, I just want to flow as the Holy Spirit is directing me. It's like, it, it looks like a gun or something sharp. Huh? I was shot in the realm of the Spirit. In my dream. You were shot. Fired at you. Yes. And what happened to you? I only I prayed when I woke up. You prayed dream. when you woke up. The Lord is going to set you free. I know that I've talked to you once, but truly, truly, there is a spirit of delay and stagnation in your life. Because you love God, and God is going to use you in many ways. Not just in the area of the anointing, but even in the area of finances. But as it is, there are many things that are not moving in your life. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the reason why you redeem is so that we will be free. I pray that you set this gentleman free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everything that was fired on your leg in Jesus' name, I curse it. Jesus' name. What's happening to you, madam? My leg is swollen. Your leg? Yes. What happened? It's just paining you or it's swollen? It's paining in me. It's for me to stand or to walk. Almost two years. It's broken for me. Almost two years. Which of the legs? This one. What can't you do? You can't stand straight. It's a problem for me, yes. Is it that it's shorter than another or what was the issue? It's not shorter than another. Okay. It's the same. It's you believe? Good. 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 Huh? Good. Why is she here? She's your daughter. My father was shot in a dream by an arrow. It, according to my dad, it 
entered his tie and came and out, came out. The this other is tie. the person I'm talking about yes, and it, huh? it caused a physical wound on his side up to present this kind where is he? is he here he's in Lagos sir he's in Lagos yes sir you believe God will touch him yes sir when I pray for you call him and tell him yes, that he's been prayed for yes huh? sir yes, because sir. this is witchcraft where are you from I'm from Ben West State what's your name my name is Kate Kate yes sir from Ben West State hold yes, my hands father visit this family you have revealed this in the name of Jesus and cause this witchcraft let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit let it leave your father never to return by the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I pray madam you believe Jesus will heal you yes, I believe. you believe with all your heart yes madam what's your situation I have to new pains since I, yeah, since I feel sick, they used to swell up. Since, you, since I was sick for six months, they used to swell up. But now I can't walk. I can walk and be feeling sharp pain. Where? Where is the sharp pain? Okay. How about you? My leg is swollen for over five years. Now. Five years. I cannot stand. No. Where is? Which one is swollen? Oh, I see. You can't stand. I can't stand for long. For a long time, Mama. How about you? Two, two months. Yes. What's happening? I have arthritis. You have arthritis. Yes. Who else? Who again? Leg problem. Leg problem. All of you, I'm going to pray for you too. Your legs are swollen. Oh, you are the one who said something beat you. Ah, you are a worker in this place. Let's challenge that devil. She's a worker in this house. There is an immunity. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that this will never return to her again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never return to her by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to check yourselves after I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Sister, five years your leg has been swollen. Permanently like that. Have you gone to the hospital? What did they tell you? Nothing was wrong. Eh? Nothing was wrong. Nothing is wrong. Because when a thing is spiritual, no matter what happens in the physical, you may not be able to get an equivalent, um, a, a something to be able to treat. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we cause witchcraft. This is like, right? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command freedom, freedom for your legs. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of witchcraft. Mama, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now every wicked spirit leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ lay your hands on your chest the Lord is bringing you deliverance right now in the name of Jesus this is witchcraft for five years I'm seeing a spirit go go in the name of Jesus you can't remain in her the swollen legs I command the swelling to go down in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus mama I pray for your leg in Jesus name I pray for your leg that's where the pain is just lay your hands there in the name of Jesus Christ I cause the pain by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ please check yourselves check yourselves check yourselves do what you couldn't do do what you couldn't do and tell me if there's any improvement how many of us came here either for ourselves or for our loved ones to be healed specifically in the area of healing let me just see your hands inside and outside can you just wave it to the Lord how many of you came here to be healed? Okay, very quickly, while the worship team leads us in a powerful worship session, want all the sick people to make their way right now. Just, just guide all the people that are under the anointing. Just shift them. Don't drag them around. Please, let's do that very quickly. Make your way out and just stand in a straight line and trust God for a miracle. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is 
Hundreds of people right outside. There is a long queue, and we'll have to minister to these people. It's not God's idea to have one superstar, it's just that many people, especially men of God, are unwilling to press into the dimensions that bring them to the possibilities. We are going to do this very, very fast. All of you who are sitting, make sure you are connected and um, you are participating. While we are ministering to the sick, I want you to pass your prayer request ushers you can walk around please make sure all those outside even those on the roadside make sure that we receive their prayer request because i'll be laying hands on it immediately afterwards myself and pastor jakes will be ministering to you whatever your challenge is i want you to believe god while you're standing lift your voice and begin to say lord i will not return back with this sickness in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus thank you jesus father i stretch my hands over your people let your healing power the Lord is healing someone of pile. I'm seeing someone that has suffered pile for a long time. The Lord is healing you right now. You may be in the healing line, but the Lord is healing you right now. Hallelujah. Please make your way. Make your way. It doesn't matter who lays hands on you. There is a corporate anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as we lay hands on you, just go this way very quickly. There are people right to the back outside so that we'll hurry up. And there are still other things we need to do. Praise God. It doesn't matter what is wrong with you. Just a laying on of hands. The anointing of the spirit is like a drug. The moment it enters your body, it begins to work. And it brings you healing. You will notice that some people are standing for healing. But as soon as hands are laid on them, Devils are coming out because they are the causes of these infirmities. Holy, holy, holy. Go out of hand. Holy, holy, holy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Holy, 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 holy
a place of healing and miracles. Look at the condition of this brother. The legs. Look at me. Leave him. Move your hand for him. Look at me. Have you tried walking before? Huh? Lift your leg. Try lifting. Lift it. Lift the other one. Stand behind him so in case he wants to fall, you hold him. Look at me. See, just look at me, not your legs. Look at me. Come, 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 just come. Don't think of how it will happen. Come, 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 come. come on, you celebrate are mighty Jesus. On at your throne. If you are here to pass yours, please just do it quickly. Can we all rise? As many as can rise, please, inside and outside. It's a very prophetic moment right now. Jesus, my heart will sing. No other name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing. No other name. No other name. Jesus. 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 My heart will sing. Please, those outside, can we have it quickly? No other name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We just have five minutes to do this. Listen, I assure you, this is the place where God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I may not be able to minister to everyone individually, but I want you to know that this is a representation of your heart's desire. This is a representation of why you are here. And I'm going to lay my hands as, on as much as possible as a point of contact. All I want you to do is stretch your hands here and begin to receive answers to your prayer. Go ahead, Shibarato Soto Go ahead, stretch your hands as I pray on this. Now God is greater, our God is stronger. Just play the tune while we pray. Stretch your hands and receive. Shaka parata katabaladaba. Lord, we are praying. Please make sure you are praying outside. Stretch your hands towards the screen. Say, Lord, I receive it. I receive it. Lift your hands and stretch your hands here and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart.
Lord, let there be testimonies in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations into testimonies. Lord, we agree, we agree, we agree in the name of Jesus. Turn impossible situations to testimonies. Stretch your hands and keep receiving. I receive by faith. Come on, pray. All kinds of miracles by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of miracles. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Even as these prayer points, Lord, are lifted up to you, Lord. As your people look up to you, Lord. They look up to you, Lord, from whence their help cometh from my Father. I ask you, Lord, that you send angels, Lord. You send answers, my Father. I pray that God doors that are yet to be opened be opened. My Father, I pray for healings, Lord. Healings or terminal cases, Lord, let it be turned. Lord, where people said, there's no way, my Father, we pray that doors, Lord, you create streams in wilderness places. My Father, Lord, for people that cast away, my Father, Lord, you make them renowned by the power of your spirit. We ask for your hand to rest upon your people. Lord, we ask that, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, will be given to your people. Answers to prayers, Lord, prayer points that have been pending for many years. We ask that, God, doors be open, Lord. Let miracles, Lord, flow into this house in the name of Jesus. Testimonies, we are bound in great ways, Lord, unprecedented miracles. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for healings. We ask that, Lord, people that are insane, you cause them to be sane in the name of Jesus. We pray for contracts that long delayed. Lord, we pray that, Lord, they will be awarded by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a shield of protection over your saints, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask for a revitalization of spiritual lives by the power of your spirit. Let the fire of God call, come on cold altars in the name of Jesus. Let there be healings and touches in families. In the blessed name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory for the great and mighty things you will do amongst us, Lord. We give you praise, blessed Father, for we know all our prayers have been answered by the power of your spirit. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe that your request has been turned into a testimony, I'd like you to shout a loud hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. A loud hallelujah. 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 For many of you, it will be like you are dreaming when you will watch one by one by one by one by one by one in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ it's by the anointing it's not by English burdens are destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah this last segment you've heard me say it again this is the most powerful and most impactful segment if you're not a man of the spirit you may not understand what I'm saying please help them this is the most powerful of this segment right now before we go into this where I begin to prophesy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy that dimension of prophecy gives you direction but the stronger dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension that's when things that are not become by the power of the spoken word never joke with the power of prophecy that's the power that created the heavens and the earth 
he said i prophesied as i was commanded before we do that very quickly everyone inside and outside there are people here tonight who are saying man of god i want to commit my life to the lord i've seen the miracles i've seen the signs and wonders but my way is not right with the lord you know that right now as you're standing here if the trumpet sounds you're not making heaven you know it right now having a christian name is not the same as having a relationship with jesus there are some you've given your heart to the lord at one time please help those under the anointing i tell you there will be a powerful impartation right now i sense a heavy anointing on me already that's why i'm doing this very quickly now if you are here please don't delay us you are saying i want to return home for whatever reason you found yourself living the ways of god and you are saying lord i have heard your word and i'm not ashamed to make jesus my lord there are people in this auditorium young and old there are people by all the overflows right to the roadside no matter how far you are hearing my voice it should not be too far right now i'll just count one to five please run like you are running away from death run like there's fire on the mountain one inside and outside the devil is a liar tonight don't let any spirit stop you Tori. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep coming, God bless you. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won. Keep coming, keep coming. Please hurry up and catch up with us. So, so deep with you. So, so deep with you. We give you praise, Sasa give you joy. One more time, Sasa give you Don't sit back there when you hear the voice of the Lord. Sasa give you I appreciate every one of you for coming out this is the way to the cross listen no matter what you achieve in life if your eternal destiny is not secured it says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life but he said this life is in his son until you have the son you do not have that life lift your right hand forget about who is looking at you and in the name of Jesus I want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you are not reciting a poem it's not a special number this is a decision there's one of you here you smoke all these kinds of things it go and the rest huh? but as you pray this prayer the power is broken over your life say after me as loud as you can from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and with everything within me this night I make Jesus Lord of my life I repent of my sins I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit I am born again I'm a child of God from today the power of sin the power of the flesh is broken over me my past is gone and it's over forever I am a new creation in Christ in the name of Jesus the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus I receive of your life 
in jesus name i pray now i stretch my hands over you and i declare the power of sin is broken over your life in the name of jesus every yoke that has tied you down lets you go forever in the name of jesus i declare that is a new season for you everything that is a habit and a challenge in your life i release you from it right now every covenant and ordinance of darkness that is the foundation of your trouble by the blood of jesus it is wiped away i set you free i break you free from every wrong association that keeps you in sin in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah i want to congratulate all of you for making this decision this is the greatest decision you would ever make in your life hallelujah now very quickly so that you catch up with us in this prophetic session i want you to follow the gentlemen waving their hands they will have your details and then we'll follow you up very closely praise the lord just follow them koinonia celebrate them as they go all of you this way this way just follow the gentlemen now everybody rise please i want you to receive this prophetic word this is the seventh month and the bible says revive thy work in the midst of the years hallelujah there is a mystery with the seventh month is the time where god perfects all things as i prophesy to you please i want you to know that there is an anointing that makes it happen hallelujah listen listen don't, don't mind all that nonsense one way to conquer satan is to ignore him all of that rubbish uh, is is the devil works in the realm of the senses by the time you focus all your attention on this drama and these things you will waste your time i know you're trying as ushers just stand around satan does not have authority i want you to know that there is an anointing manifestations are already signs that his power is broken but satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh so he begins to act around your mind to distract you when you ignore satan is one way of conquering him it does not have the capacity to continue all of this nonsense are you getting my point so this is teaching you so that tomorrow you don't end up wasting your time with all this rubbish and all this drama praise the lord lift your hands i prophesied as i was commanded you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne you are Yahweh seated on the throne <laughs> you are Yahweh you are seated on the throne father in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels are they not ministering spirits send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation I pray for you every weakness in your life that weakness dies tonight in the name of Jesus every weakness in your life that weakness leaves you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that Red Sea you are standing before by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this second half of the year. An anointing comes upon you and I prophesy cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea. Cross every Red Sea in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every student here. Oh, for there is a spirit in man and the inspiration make it men of understanding. I'm praying for you. Some of you, listen. As I pray now, some of you will literally feel like oil being poured upon your head is an impartation of knowledge right now oh god i release an anointing to change the story of students at the count of three let it fall right now one two three take it take it take it take it now 
take it now that anointing receive it for exploits shaka -ta -ta -ta. inside and outside take it for exploits 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 hallelujah everything called stagnation in your life that has forced you to stay in one position while you should be moving right now in the name of jesus and by the power of prophecy i command stagnation to end now 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 my goodness something is happening to your destiny every night season in your life every wilderness experience that has refused to break forth into the day i speak to you right now your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally your morning arrives finally hallelujah there is something called favor i don't know if you know it but there is something called favor when the favor of god is upon a man your looks your background your qualifications no longer matter let an anointing of favor right now i see at least 100 people 100 people like fire hundred people right now receive it receive it favor 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 upon your life favor haratata bakata shakata lakata bratakata favor 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 parekete embratata lakata i prophesy by an apostolic anointing favor 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 everyone holding anything that should be given to you for the next level i don't care where they are but i sound an alarm in the spirit that in this month we're entering called august may that be the month where you receive the keys of the next level receive the keys of the next level the mysteries of the next level every spiritual blindness shababa things happen around you you cannot see blood of spiritual vision i pray right now many of you will see like flashes of light as i'm praying right now you will see literally like flashes of light your eyes are opening right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the holy ghost blindness spiritual blindness spiritual blindness be free from it right now be free from it right now be free from it right now hallelujah there are many of us here dreams and visions are prophetic channels where we get insight and direction but for many of us our dreams and visions have either been corrupted or it's no longer there the bible says they will dream dreams it says they will see visions lift your hands 
there will be an, a restoration anointing right now i just want you to shout i receive listen many things will happen to you many of you is an activation of the realm of dreams and visions where god will start showing you the blueprint for the next level right now in the name of jesus at the count of three as you shout i receive let there be an impartation upon your dream life upon spiritual visions one two three now you receive it receive it restoration of fire fire dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams see visions dream dreams hallelujah he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing except a jar of oil i want to prophesy upon your gift it's one thing to be gifted but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed there are many of you the gift you have can bring bread to your table but nobody is seeing it it's one thing to be gifted it's one thing to be skilled but it's another thing for your gift to be anointed thou anointed my head with oil and it makes my cup to overflow i prophesy to you whatever has covered your gift whatever has made your gift barren right now in the name of jesus i anoint your gift now i anoint your skill now i anoint your gift now creativity creativity i release it i release that anointing creativity skill expertise competence proficiency in the name of jesus christ listen anybody who has said it's not your time to manifest that you always remain on the background you clap for others but you are not cursed it's god's desire that every man will also come to the lamb light i pray for you whatever has kept you behind right now in the name of jesus i command let the light be on you let the light of glory be on you hallelujah everything you have tried by your strength to do and you have been unable to do throughout half of this year you have tried by your strength i'm releasing grace upon your life right now go back to that same thing and watch how god will bless you through it i pray for every ministry here from glory to glory every church represented from honor to honor new dimensions of the anointing in the name of jesus christ every business here is time to shine come on every business here i strengthen your hand arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine arise and shine, arise and shine. lift your hands one last prayer listen i want to activate the gift of the spirit without the gift of the spirit upon your life your life will be barren and unfruitful it says for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established i pray for you in the name of the lord jesus christ that the Lord himself something is about to happen to your life right now as I speak father I come under this apostolic anointing right now across the length and breadth 
in this auditorium and outside at the count of three let there be an activation of spiritual gifts one two three take it take it gift of healing word of knowledge gift of prophecy 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 i activate the prophetic i open your eyes spiritual gifts endowments of the spirit i declare that you are supernatural beginning from tonight in the name of jesus everywhere you go you are supernatural let the anointing upon this house follow you like a shadow i prophesy to you every anointing that is upon this house from today let it follow you like a shadow whatever the anointing has brought to this house let it bring it to your life hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life hey a little bit a little bit soon your day will dawn stop working you changing everything will you swallow your pride Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little yeah, a little yeah. Soon your day will dawn as I work in you. Stop crying around and looking for invitation. Invite me. I can sing. Pastor, invite me to your church. I promise you won't be disappointed. No. No. Stay in the secret place. Let everyone go. Remain there. He will sharpen you. Mm. Sharpen you. Then when you come out, you will be like the gold of offer. The finest of it. Finest of it. No guessing. Listen. You see, I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was walking now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of results 
the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says herein is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledge you and just called you daddy or called you mommy or called you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and saying leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubit is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly to tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that God can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here a little there soon your day will dawn start working you changing everything yeah. hallelujah I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards many of you never know I've not announced one to you several awards you will never see one on my table I don't trust those things I thank God for them but I don't believe them <clears throat> you see if you if 10 of you write a test huh, over 100 and you get 12 over 100 and you are the highest you can get prize for first position but did you pass so you have to you don't just say i'm the one leading this thing how far with respect to god's expectation we are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen we are talking of ancient portals opened up hosting god like gods on the earth we are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously not all this jamboree and talking and jacking we are talking of putting nations under the feet of jesus stopping the sun to rise over nations until jesus becomes lord joshua did it when you get satisfied with little results oh she got healed oh i prayed for the woman she got pregnant oh i prayed for that dead baby he came back to life you have pegged yourself and you will never rise far am i wasting your time 
if this is all we do today can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue lord i'm not leaving your presence not at this time Thank you for what you have done. But Lord, there is more. Thank you for the miracles. But there are higher levels of fire. There are higher levels of power. There are higher dimensions, rankings in the spirit. Pray, pray. You are a prophet, but there are deeper levels. Come on now. There are levels of the prophetic where you create realities. You are an apostle, no doubt. But there are levels of the apostolic where you are given the keys of David that can shut doors and no one will open. Don't be tired. This is where we are made. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And the people say, Holy. Let me tell you the kind of training and the kind of weapon do you know north korea has weapons we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles america has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you i will beat down nation he didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good greek and hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of god prophetically you have all of god but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but i'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are i know you have tried but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are 
darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and it, oh, hold on I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we're making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down you say come one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a harpalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing no. this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can gist and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them blood is a sacrifice hallelujah something came on me for you to please let's not play games with this thing if you are in it 
go for it go for it fast for it pray for it study for it sit down for it sit down for it don't rush anything i assure you one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years there's nothing called wasted time with him please sit down you need to advise yourself tonight myself sit down myself sit down myself sit down myself sit ah you are papa thank god myself sit down you are mama you are deaconess you are prophetess you are apostle you are this myself sit down then you will command levels of power and you will stand and watch what god is doing to you and you will say my god what is this please be seated in jesus name if I had my way, we would just pray till the service is finished. Because when the water is, the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot. As it's hot like this, you strike it. Let everything that is not God fly out of that, that, that making. Let's touch on something tonight. But this message is really a message that struck hard. I believe there are specific people this word is for. God is asking you to wake up and Eli is asking you to go back to sleep. You have to choose who to believe. At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of things an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice program one program here one event here one crusade here one conference here you won't grow that way a, a conference is not kind you won't grow that way many of us are obsessed passionate you have a church of two members there are 10 crusades 10 conferences in one year what are you doing be honest with yourself nobody grows that way you sit down and you are sharpened and filed. You know how a razor blade is? When you buy a new razor blade, you touch it on a paper. That's how it goes. That's what God is saying. You see God lifting all these our people now. Worship team. Gradually, gradually. When, when they all come to me, I tell them, go and sit down. Because... I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit. You can feel sharp because you cut wood. But what you are going to be cutting are metals. Not woods. Metals. Metals. There are machines that ride through metals. There are machines that cut stones. Do you know the, the, the strength of those materials? You cut through those. Brah, just cut everything. There are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods. They will hook and the machine will stop turning. That's nonsense and inferior product. It's a sign that that was not a good product. But when you buy it, you buy something, it will cut through rocks and pieces them. That's what God is telling you. By the time you stand, in all the millions you are looking for, you will be so valuable. Oh, I, at my age, I think I should have built a house. Don't worry. Just stay. Somebody will bring a car key, bring a house key, bring all kinds of things and give you. Be careful. Unhealthy comparison will destroy you. We live in a world that is very carnal. I teach you success principles. We just finished success systems. But be careful. Unhealthy comparison. At my age, I am 40. At my age, I'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows. Okay, sorry. You don't have it now so what are you going to do about it I, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars 
and houses you are in trouble oh. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes god doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed it's a mystery i've said it many people would think it's witchcraft if you see me in your dream wake up and rejoice something serious happened to you hallelujah you must have the arsenals when you are discouraged what do you have in your spiritual arsenal is there a message is there a tool i tell you woe to that person who has not programmed you don't prepare for battle at the war front you station them there are tools whenever i feel that i'm losing spiritual favor there are tools already ah, there are tools there are tools there are tools god gave me tools tools whenever you feel you are lazy that fasting grace is not there i tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always god's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises hallelujah Feel like praying no oh, this thing is on me i feel like praying. i wish i were alone i feel like praying let me tell you how what to do whenever your spirit is dead don't go to bed pray immediately make sure you can sleep pray but don't waste it there are times this kind of things happen to you alone you are listening to a message every time every time because the moment you feel it it's like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the, this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately 
Hallelujah. The spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in number one, our image. Everybody say image. Number two, after our likeness. And then he says, let them, oh, it's projected, have dominion. Please stop. The Bible says, let us make man in two, using two dimensions. The first is our image. Now, until Adam, we know that already, that there were already inhabitants upon the earth, right? Other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species. Adam is not the first man. Are we together? The first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were made of other substances not earthly and not god's own kind of body they were heavenly body as we call it but then there was a grading of them according to different di dimensions are we together now but then when it came to the making of man listen all other species were made in the likeness of god but never in his image the image of God was what Lucifer wanted. Lucifer was already in the likeness of God. The likeness of God means God has two hands. The Bible doesn't tell us he has um, the seven eyes and seven horns are just prophecies. Are we together now? God has two legs. He stands on one head. There are creatures, all kinds of things. But I'm saying God as a person. When Jesus came, the Bible called him the full expression of the image of the Christ. So we see him carrying that form. All other humanoid species were in the likeness of man, of God. But man was in the image. The image of God is a spiritual quality. Right? The, the imprint of his person. The very factor that makes God God is where you get the root word, kabod, glory. The essence of God was vested in his image. Image so man was made this time around not just in the likeness of god but the image of god and then god told us straight up the purpose for making that man watch this he never said let them be preachers he never said let them be apostles please listen he never said let them be pastors he didn't say let them conduct koinonia are we together the mandate was let them have dominion write that word down dominion dominion is a language of governance it's a political language a language of governance dominion is a language of legislature legislature has to do with enacting or enforcing laws enacting birthing them or enforcing the ones that have already been passed dominion means to take charge take charge of a territory dominion means to take charge dominion talks of stewardship please write it down so let them take charge let them legislate let them govern let them have stewardship this is God's original idea a great mentor dr miles munro will tell you that's god's original idea now watch this in theology there's what we call the law of first use right the law of first use means that whenever you want to study the context of a word the first key is to go and find where it was first used the context upon which it was used is the anchor with which you will use to interpret every other appearance of it are we together if it veers off from the first context then you must use another strategy of interpreting it are we together now 
so the first time we see the word dominion it was attached to man the first time we see god making man he didn't sit down and rest later on and then he woke up and said man i don't know what to do with you okay let's try dominion have it and see he says let them have dominion dominion stewardship control redemption as we know was a veering off of the original plan please understand this everything from genesis 4 listen carefully everything from genesis 4 down up until acts chapter 1 was an extra curriculum added to it the original agenda of god had to do with dominion that's why i read for you revelations and genesis everything that is in between came as a remedy system are we together please you have to understand this god's original idea was not to have the fivefold ministry god's original idea was not to have churches uh -uh. god's original idea is not to have crusades god's original idea was not to have altar calls god's original idea was not to have healing services all of those things were predicated upon something that happened we call it the fall of man man's use of his will to defy god's will in rebellion led to other provisions so everything from genesis chapter 4 the law and and the annals of the kings and everything that happened down they were of course there were adumbrations but immediately from that time it was a system to be able to get man to qualify back to carry out the dominion mandate listen the dominion mandate was and is still god's desire and intent for man now many believers do not know this we come around church activities which is good we come around spiritual growth which is good we even come around going to heaven which is not a bad idea the bible says it so we believe it but much more than going to heaven are we together now much more than all of these things oh i'm looking forward to my jesus coming someday the bible says to look forward to his appearance however god's original idea for you was not heaven god's original idea for you was earth it is still earth it will always be earth his plans can change but his purposes are eternal are we learning something so imagine for instance um can i use you come my goal for this gentleman everybody watch this my goal for this gentleman is to go and carry that water you see that water that's what i want to carry so at the beginning of the journey i have stated the end from the beginning because that's the character of god he reveals the end from the beginning then you start leaving that script now this guy starting his journey something happens are we together let's assume that he injures himself through whatever it is now i temporarily suspend i suspend this agenda of him getting there to treat something that went wrong with him are we together that is everything that came from the law until jesus it was a fear enough of the original manuscript to be able to bring man back to the position now when you come back to that position and it so happens that this time around it must be in christ listen so when you now come back to that position you are supposed to continue that agenda but when you get distracted and you now forget about the agenda and you are doing other things the one who sent you will never have fulfillment and satisfaction are we together the bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof thank you so there are many people doing several things just, just calm down with this for a moment i want everybody to hear me everybody say marriage shout it marriage. say employment shout it say promotion 
Say houses. Say cars. Say long life. Divine health. Bungalow. Just say everything I say. Duplex. Jeep. Prosperity. Hold on. All those things are requirements that help us back so that we can continue this agenda in themselves they are useless as far as God's eternal counsel is concerned their usefulness only comes in in how they help you align to fulfill this are we together so marriage on its own is useless to you if it cannot find a bearing to this car jeep on its own is useless to you until it finds a bearing let me tell you one of the most useless ways of living on earth is not to have the dominion mandate at work in your life it's not to have the consciousness of god's kingdom agenda yet you are achieving things so at the end of it like the rich fool you gather money oh i made wise financial decisions and God looks at you. Have you read in the Bible that our works will be tried with fire? What do you think will be the basis? That means there are people that you will see like a heap and fire will pass. And at the end of it, what will be there will not be up to my hand. They will be gauged with respect to their nearness to this agenda. Stewardship of earth. Kingdom advancement, we call it. Please, you must understand this. If you don't understand this, you will never be an effective Christian. We have been so distracted. We have veered off this. Prosperity teaching without a kingdom understanding will lead people to carnality and useless living. Are we together? Teaching people to wear nice clothes, wear these, and people claim cars and claim all of this. All those things are only useful to the degree to which. So we have a church that is full of largely carnal and lost driven people. Not because the object of their desire is wrong in itself, but it has no kingdom bearing. Are we together? So someone looks at a jeep, just pass and say, hey, I claim it. And God says, okay, with respect to what? I say, God, just leave me. I claim it. I shall claim it. There are ways you can know immature believers. And there are ways you can know that they have not been trained well. Let me tell you how to measure growth in the spirit. When a man's life has been aligned to the purposes of the kingdom and everything that proceeds from him with respect to his desires are only there to create a platform for this dominion mandate, that person is a mature believer. Are we together? If I ask you what are your concerns now, Many of us will lift our hands and say, money, money, sir. Direct money, just money. Naira, like that. Pounds, dollars, money. Another person will say, child, child. This my womb must carry a child. You ask the person, why are you so desperate for a child? You know what the person is going to say? Largely, all the people who married uh, uh, what, around my, my time have children. Some have two, some have five, some have ten. I'm alone. And that's the reason why the person wants a child. Are we together? Ask someone, why are you going to school? Say, are you joking? You want me to be hungry, Abby? Okay, if you are full, what is it for? Say, well, I'm for everybody is like that. I need to get a good job. Then another person says, I'm not getting a good job. I'm a businessman because he went to one seminar. Both of them are useless as far as the kingdom is concerned. If you cannot state bringing your strong reason let me tell you a chip. You've heard me preach this again and again. The dominion mandate remains God's desire. And anybody who plunges into that agenda has commanded both the hand and the heart of God. Both the hand and the heart of God. Supplies don't just follow your needs. They follow your pursuit of the dominion mandate prosperity, long life, healing 
all of these things pursue you when you pursue this jesus said it this way 633 matthew but seek first the kingdom kingdom he didn't say seek first heaven the kingdom is not heaven seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then he says in doing so all other things shall be added unto you are we together it is God's desire that we reign in life and look at me the concept of reigning in life has nothing to do with usurping authority over people please give us Genesis 126 again God meticulously listed everything he wanted us to have dominion over. Let's look at it, please. 126. Let's hurry up. Genesis 126. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. Read on now. Over what? The fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. Over the cattle. Over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth notice that man was not mentioned the dominion mandate is not usurping authority and control over men when you do that it's called witchcraft it's called manipulation it's an attitude of the antichrist every government that oppressed people had a revolt historically at a point in time the people were angry you know why there's chaos and anarchy because people were not designed to be dominated they were designed to be led they were not designed to be ruled when in bible days when god wanted to punish either his people or your enemies he gave you authority to treat them like animals so he would cause them to become slaves he would cause them to become servants. He would cause them to serve you. Not like a man serving somebody he loves. Subject them to slavery. Slavery had always been a way of God communicating his dissatisfaction. Either with his people or people who made themselves his enemies. Listen. The moment you find out an appetite to rule over men. I don't mean lead men. Rule over men is the spirit of the antichrist. There is a programming that has come from Babylon that is at work in your life. Unfortunately, this system that we live in has designed people to live that way. Right from primary school. They clap for you and give you an award for taking first. Now, the idea is not whether you did well or not. The idea is that you beat other people. So they clap for you in their presence. Now their humiliation becomes your trophy. Are we together? As you hold that award and look at your closest rival and smile in victory and watch the pain of the person. You see footballers, when they win, Arsenal, Man U, the ones who win flaunt the cup and you see the other people crying. And that cry is the joy and the triumph of the people. It's an antichrist system. Now, of course, we use it all the time. Some of you have schools, use it. The Lord help you, but I'm, we're examining the word. It's not supposed to be that way. So, now you find out that students from primary school, secondary school, their agenda is not to do well. Their agenda is to beat others. They clap for you with respect to how you trample others. That's why malpractice comes in. It's an effort to force your way to the top, whether you are ready or not. So, you manipulate ways. They even named generators. I pass my. You see where those revelations came from? They look very subtle, but they are devilish understandings sponsored by Babylon. What is your neighbor's. Um, 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 what is the issue with your neighbor and your life? No. I pass my neighbor. So you now compare yourself on healthy competition. Every time men try to usurp authority over men, it's now going to be survival of the fittest. Whoever can oppress someone. Are we together? But God's idea is to lead men, not oppress them. In fact, they asked Jesus this question. Who will be the greatest? You see the disciples? Greatest, greatest. Not who will be great. Who will be the greatest, the chiefest of all? And Jesus looked at them. 
and then he said the the pharisees and all of this use that method of leadership he said but it should not be among you whoever wants to be great must be your minister your servant that the way up is to serve people not truncate them this is a good message for a pastor's conference because we live in a time where men of god in the name of spiritual authority I believe in authority have pocketed the destinies of other people some of you here are victims of this and you need deliverance fast where a man of God takes your destiny and puts it in his pocket he may be well meaning but he or she was also indoctrinated into that understanding and they make it look like you leave me you die if I ask for money you don't ask questions if I come to your house and say rice you say yes sir beans yes sir everything yes sir and they use scripture and threaten people it is antichrist the moment you find out that you are forcing people to respond to you outside of their will you are subscribing to another system it is not of God what of workers in the house of God you you must be a worker what of partners you promise this is your suit you are going to start sewing 50,000 and the guy says how about I'm, I'm your boss in office I know how much I'm paying you 50,000 that thing looks nice it is not God's way hello I know you don't like what I'm saying. We're teaching on the dominion mandate. Many of the chaos and the anarchy that we have around our society, that passion to oppress people, that passion to leave people bankrupt of information because knowledge gives light. Is that true? That's why many times they do not want people to be educated because when they are enlightened, they can know their rights and they can stand up. So they keep people in ignorance. There are systems and nations that the strength of that oppression is hinged upon the lack of orientation of the people. Then we have carved out a name. We call them masses. Masses. And then all kinds of sociologists began to come up with their their postulations to call religion the opium of the masses people like Karl Marx and the rest came up with all kinds of things it was smart you're a sociologist answer it but oh, that is junk I'm sure wherever he is now he has known the truth listen let me tell you you see the Holy Spirit is the oldest authorized spiritual entity on earth today he's worth your trust are we together? Everything started in his presence till now. The dominion mandate is not about usurping authority over people. Listen, the dominion mandate is not about outshining people. The dominion mandate is not outshining pastors, outshining men of God. I have larger crowds than you. That means we are taking over. The concept of take over must be well defined. Because for many people, take over means to come and push you. You had a small church. We came and within one year, we are the ones in Zaria. We are taking over. We have to be careful. Because most of what we call kingdom advancement is not only sheep stealing, it's sheep killing, sheep destruction, and so on and so forth. Let me clarify for us what the dominion mandate is. It has nothing to do with outshining people. It has nothing to do with competition. No. It has everything to do with the governance of the earth. It has everything to do with the stewardship of God's system. To the end that the fullness of his glory, kabod, his essence, his lifestyle would find expression in the earth. John uh, Matthew chapter 6, we'll read from verse um, 9 and 10. Jesus is teaching us how to pray and then he tries to instill in us a dominion and kingdom paradigm and he says, give us Matthew chapter yes, he says, after this manner therefore pray, our father which art in heaven, we hallow or we revere your name. Then verse 10 says, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come your agenda that domain you have carved out for us we want your influence the word kingdom is a combination of two words a king's domain dominion the sphere where the dominion of a king finds expression kingdom are we together now 
so god's prayer for us is that we pray that on this side of his kingdom that the reality of our stewardship the reality of the purposes of god be established across the earth the same way it is done in heaven it has nothing to do with ministry it has nothing to do with usurping men ministry prosperity are only tools to help us say prosperity is only a tool divine health is only a tool so you see when you have these things the dominion mandate consumes you they will never steal away god from your life that was the mistake of the rich fool he thought life was only about making money when he now made money and built bands he secured himself hear what he told himself my soul find rest in other words i have come to the end of my pursuit nothing else to be done and god says no this is a rich fool tonight because you are useless as far as my agenda is concerned tonight this night your soul is required of you what is the key to carrying out the dominion mandate the next teachings i'm going to be teaching us the different dimensions of the dominion mandate but what is the key the key is in romans chapter 5 and verse 17 another scripture that has not been properly understood by many romans chapter 5 verse 17 let's see where god will help us tonight it says for if by one man's offense that one man now um death reigned by one adam the first adam right adam the husband of eve for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more listen they that receive two things what's number one abundance of take note of that number two and of the gift of righteousness these are the two requirements to be able to execute the dominion mandate effectively number one the gift of righteousness the bible did not put them in the order they should come it just gave you information the first thing you need to be able to carry out the dominion mandate effectively that mandate of exercising god's sovereign control on earth is the ability to be a possessor of what the bible calls the gift of righteousness then number two abundance abundance of grace the bible says whoever is a possessor of these two realities can reign effectively in the earth reigning in the earth is not just you see dominion there are different aspects of dominion i'll be teaching us in other series there are dimensions of dominion authority and the ability to legislate is only one of the dimensions that's not all there is to dominion creativity you see that authority has to do with legislature through your words through decrees creativity has to do with legislature influence through your seeds through your ideas right there are many dimensions i'll be teaching you so executing authority the capacity to speak and have things happen is only one of the dimensions of dominion unfortunately many people come around there and they feel because i speak and some things happen i'm walking in dominion you'll be very blessed by this series it will help you to reset what you call christianity so that you will arrange things accordingly and know what your ultimate pursuit should be because there's confusion in the body of christ for many like we always teach and well-meaning and innocently the goal is heaven and that's not a lie but the bible never teaches going to heaven as the end of all things it's not in the bible i'm a christian are we together i believe in heaven but that's that's not it you read your bible the bible talks about this old earth and the whole heavens passing away a new earth coming and god living where he is i told you heaven listen heaven was never initially god's throne there is there was a day that there was no heaven yet god was alive and was existing the bible says he dwells in unapproachable light he created heaven and put his throne there 
and that's why he say heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool he's going to move that throne now to the earth so god did not used to live in heaven no he created heaven for reasons that we are going to find out the bible as we know has not revealed to us clearly these are some of the hidden mysteries that eating of the tree of life will supply us when we get to the new jerusalem that's why our knowledge will still be unfolding are we together now we are going to find out because there certainly was a reason why the heavens and the earth were created genesis 1 verse 1 they were not just created just because of adam uh -uh. they were fixed back because of adam god's original idea listen carefully with respect to making heavens in the beginning and the earth what we even call the dominion mandate given to our dispensation is a subset of that ultimate agenda we will find out revelation ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are you blessed that means there are many things we are going to find out let me give you a few information <laughs> should I say this hmm. some of the spirit beings that we generically call angels were once inhabitants in the earth they had their dispensation are we together and the same way we have what we call judgment day and rapture a similitude of that event happened to them they now are still excelling in light growing and they have been authorized together with the angels to come and serve the saints and help us complete this dispensation angels are not the only spirit beings in the realm of the spirit anytime you see any other thing that is not god and it's not the four living creatures we just say they are angels in a sense we are right the word is angelio a messenger they are always sent ones from the throne but in terms of classification and configuration no angels are not the only spirit beings that are sent on errand read your bible mount zion there are many inhabitants there there are spirits of just men made perfect correct there are innumerable company of angels there are all kinds of things that happen there in that atmosphere of mount zion am i boring you are you learning something when we know this you see even the things we call rema are only relative because they are not strange to the realm of the spirit they are only coming to us newly demons know some of these things i tell you theologically speaking you see when these spirits came you you know the bible talks about those we call the nephilims and other kinds of giants who the bible says were a product of these spirit beings the bible calls them sons of god is that true sons of god who slept with the daughters of men and gave birth to people who were half men and half spirit entities like oak the king of bashan goliath of god and many other people who appeared we see that they were superhuman some of them had six fingers six toes it was some of this interaction with these spirit beings that also taught women what we call the mystery of seduction all of these things were part of the doctrines is what paul together calls the doctrines of demons are we together now it was some of the propositions that these spirit beings brought to the daughters of men that made them to like them and even allow them to have children with them that's that's another separate lecture again but just for you to know and to understand that a lot has happened in this earth and if we do not stay fixed upon what authorized our being here we will live very useless lives as a church and as individuals say amen this teaching will give meaning to your prosperity this teaching will give meaning to your fasting and prayer do you know why many people get born again and stop there have you seen people that when you tell them oh i'm praying i'm on a program i'm on a this and that they look at you and say what that's a waste because they do not understand this so for them the entire scope of their theology is escapism from hell and then you stand and continue to manage your life through repeated repentance until rapture comes the day you hear that trumpet do anything you want you are safe you see the theology that's a torturous and frustrating theology jesus said occupy till i come the word occupy does not mean build houses 
advance with those influence until I come. There's something we are missing. That's why our young ones are not interested in God again. Because our marketing of what we give them as Christianity is ugly and unattractive. So you see a young child of 12 years and now put stringent rules around that child. And then you tell the child, be born again. Then the child is born again and say, okay, daddy, what next? He said, are you asking me? Let's go to church. And he says, daddy, I'm going to church every Sunday. Now you say, I should add Wednesday. He say, oh, I yeah, join baptismal class. I see that you are too idle. Then the guy joins a baptismal class. Then they teach him the doctrines of the denomination. Then the day for water baptism comes. They baptize him, give him a, an English name and hand over a certificate. And then the child says, okay, what do I do again? He so just continue coming to church. And he said, no, no, no. Let me, what is all this? I cannot just continue coming to church. Daddy, I think I have grace to dance. If I see you dancing in my house, I will kill you by myself. My child, dance? Okay, daddy, I have the grace to paint. Paint for what? Serve God. So they have taught you, painting and serving God are not the same. And you leave painting. And you leave this. Daddy, I think I have a passion about broken marriages. Say, don't be stupid. Concentrate and grow spiritually. Jesus is coming very soon. Now, that's a very innocent doctrine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not being sarcastic. But that thing, many of you seated looking at me now, is one of the reasons why you left the things of God. Because you couldn't under... There was no logic to it. Someone comes from being a Muslim and then becomes a child of God, maybe a Christian and all of that, and you sit the person down and the person now says, okay, I have escaped this. I'm a child of God. Say, so what do I do now? Become a worker in church. Then the person is a worker in church and then one day the person says, honestly, I don't know what, what is going on here. What is the meaning of this? Where are we going? Just say, don't worry, oh, this thing, there's a reward. And the person is saying, I don't understand. Then others have said no god could not keep us like this let's add flavor to it then they swung to the other side of the pendulum and the church has become a place of just fun and laughter and say let's just enjoy ourselves and they say we are occupying you are not occupying that's laziness and idleness are we together so we have all just fun and play around play and play and joke and take the church of God to become like a museum or an amusement park no both are wrong let me tell you when you know the dominion mandate you will be so busy you will not even you will think age is not on your side you see people wake up in the morning with a sense of urgency they, they are, the issue of heaven is settled see let me tell you um, we are going, I hope that one of this series will look at redemption and I am going to be showing you that the issue of heaven is not is not supposed to be a frightful thing are we together the issue of heaven is like an admission letter into a university when you have an admission letter it is possible to lose the admission letter but you cannot be in 200 level and all you are thinking about is your admission letter no you have lectures is that true you are looking at something else imagine a student in 300 level and he's moving where's my admission letter and he opens the box and sees it and keeps it and says, ah thank you jesus that's what we do with this rapture heaven thing i'm not against it you know me i love people i love souls but having that kind of mindset will never help you to be effective that's why we don't treasure creativity that's why we don't treasure dominion why because we think the most important thing is let me just be careful god can come any day and any time let him just come and find me your your being fit going to heaven listen going to heaven has never been something that a man did for himself by qualification you have to understand this the part where you get that you merit is the reward of crowns is based on your works utilizing the grace that was supplied for you and the degree to which you advance the kingdom to it with it will determine your rewards we will not get the same rewards when a child is born we say he came from where please help me <laughs> now that child is now afraid to go back okay let me not let's let's not talk about this thing i don't want to make us feel very bad I need to clarify a lot of things. I hope that God will grant me grace to teach it. 
the book of life rapture heaven the conditions for heaven and all of that because you see the bible lets us know clearly that what the bible calls what we have called the judgment day is a season of reward for the saints the bible clearly lists those who will be punished who should be afraid why should i be in christ why should i be walking with god and my life is perpetually a subject of fear fear those things look nice you know sometimes you have to shake people a little bit to get serious with their lives but it's impossible to serve god that way there was a time i think there was a propaganda there have been many about the coming of christ and people till today people still come up with visions i saw that jesus christ is coming in august 24th and you see people people sold their houses land that they would have been rich now their children are suffering foolish people made stupid business decisions gave away land you know people shaved their head they were waiting and all, and, and, and all of that and nothing really happened god does not teach us to wait for him this way the bible already tells us that the coming of christ will be like the days of noah let me tell you let me i'm sharing with you the dominion mandate the coming of christ will not take believers unaware did you hear what i said the coming of christ i repeat will not take believers unaware please give me first thessalonians chapter five we are reading one to four first thessalonians chapter five is god helping us we're going to find someone and pray tonight first thessalonians chapter five but of the times please look up whether you are inside outside i want us to read it together okay i'll read it i'll tell you where to join but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that i write to you so he's talking to who brethren the church is that true verse 2 for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night many theologians well-meaning stop here and they keep telling people he's coming like a thief in the night and coming like it the bible did not stop here it was paul himself who had his revelation uh, his knowledge of the mystery by revelation are we together verse 3 for when they shall say those who are without when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they 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 shall not escape if you're a child of god read the next verse with all your heart one two give us verse four please quickly one two read one more time so if that day overtakes you what is the sign that you are in darkness is that true the bible says we are the light of the world is that true it says but ye brethren i'm speaking to you of the times and the seasons and i am telling you that it will be in the similitude of the day of noah that day look at it it's in your bible i didn't write this that day will not overtake you as a thief why because the spirit of god is in us there is a salt covenant we are joined he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together you can never serve god when you live in fear of rapture and fear of heaven and fear of hell growing up there used to be a word that the old folks used to use assurance of not salvation assurance of salvation assurance of admission letter assurance of job that's why every time they give you a job they give you a little paper it's a token to prove to you that you are there the bible says god gave us his spirit as a proof as a seal of our redemption as a proof that we are now the begotten of him that he's no longer the firstborn um the only begotten he's now the first begotten of we the brethren are we together now 
so that God is not ashamed. He's not ashamed to call us brethren, but has given us the same spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It doesn't mean people don't backslide. It doesn't mean people don't derail. But I want you to know this. There is a way we have been teaching. I'm showing you the things that have occupied us so that we do not focus on the dominion mandate. 80% of the church is occupied by just preparing themselves for rapture. And I'm not against books. I know that there are books that have been written. There are encounters. Am I boring you? This is a foundation. Because several of us are living in fear. You don't even know what to believe. You are afraid. You are sitting, you are standing and you are wondering. And they tell you if God comes and just when you are, you know, maybe shouting at somebody, that's the end of it. If he comes to meet you shouting. You see that? And so we walk in all kinds of fear. Even when we go before God. There is no confidence in approaching him. I believe in repentance. You know me. I always balance things. It's foolishness that makes people to just swing the other side and don't coordinate it. There are spiritual coordinates that guide our dispensing of the truth. When you swing things in either side and they are not regulated by the word, it will still lead to error. I believe in repentance. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There were two men hanging on the cross. Two of them were thieves, true or false. A thief is somebody who stole something and they caught him. Those ones now. Is that true? They were hanging on the cross. And one was quarreling Jesus. Look, Jesus, you are this and nice of you to help us kill these people and let's escape and go and you see, there was no repentance in his heart. The other person turned and said, Ah, this guy is undeserving. We deserve this thing. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. Why? For believing me. For believing me. For believing my innocence. Whatever gave you that revelation must be sponsored by the Spirit of God. Because no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. To say Jesus is Lord does not mean J-E-S-U-S-I-S-L-O-R-D. No, that's not it. The Lordship of Jesus is declared by revelation. Our announcing it is simply a product of, it's not the reason. No. That's why the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, while they yet, Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on them. There are so many things in my spirit. We have to free ourselves. The average Christian that we see walking around does not exactly know what he should do for God. Even what we, when we talk about purpose, most people think purpose is just for graduates. You are a graduate, your purpose is whatever you studied, do something with it, get married, train your children and give some money to the church and God will help you. That is a fruitless life. It truly is a fruitless life. The dominion mandate has been corrupted by an exaggerated fear of hellfire, fear of heaven, fear of rapture. And there are books that keep coming. Every time you go online and just Google it, some of you, oh, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw rapture. It may not be a lie. The impact of revelations can cause you to be biased. If the Holy Spirit does not balance you. You can be caught up in an event. And see the rapture happen. And the catastrophe that happened. And if God does not give you balance. You can return back to earth. And start harassing everybody. Brother be prepared. I'm late for work. I'm telling you that Jesus is coming. And you know, and all, and we'll make people feel guilty. And pastors sometimes. We are gullible. Because there are members that bully us. I want to come and teach a series. I had a seven days revelation about rapture. I need to come and teach people. And they come and stand. And at the end of that teaching. You wonder whether God is really love. There are those who have seen every pastor in hell. Listen to my message. Revelation. Uh, what was it called? Reality of heaven and hell. 
There are people who have seen Satan found out that this is a very useful tool. So those who started having these experiences, Satan can appear as an angel of light. Are we learning? He now began to open people through experiences. It is true that they left earth. It is true that they were somewhere. It is true that they saw tears, similitudes, and they returned back to destroy people. Let me tell you something. This issue of rapture and heaven and hell has caused more fear and uncertainty to the extent that pastors who love God and have served in the vineyard for years cannot stand today. If I say it right now, if you know you are going to heaven, don't stand up. But if I say stand up, some of you will just stand up so that you are not embarrassed. So that if somebody will say, we are praying together, you mean you don't even know where you are going. You are not my friend again. But the truth is many people don't know. For many people, this is our theology. Let's just keep watching. The day the trumpet sounds, if I make it glory to be, to be to Jesus. No. So we preoccupy our minds and never do anything. Are we together? We never do anything. It has made many fathers irresponsible in the name of being evangelists or missionaries. Ah, I need, there's an urgency in my spirit. I need to preach the gospel. Jesus can come, you know, any day, any time. Honey, there is no food. That's not the issue. Let's just pay the price. God knows when he comes, he will reward us. And the wife is saying, what are you saying? There's no food in the house. Nothing is happening. And at the end of it, the man will run and leave them and call the woman a witch. Call the children he gave birth to the five children witches. Leave the children to roam around like prostitutes and say, I'm going to the mission field. And then an unbeliever will meet them and train them and convert them. You see what is happening all around? Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. There has never been any stadium-like crusade with any evangelism. But you are using an aberration of the dominion mandate. Occupy structures, systems, everywhere until I come. Listen, brothers and sisters, if we do not get this straight, we are going to live very useless lives. The most heat of this tragedy is the north. Northern Christians are the most dominion mandate non-compliant. You know why? Because the Christianity we received in the north was purely evangelical. Are we together? And which was correct. But I'm saying that the imbalance there is that because of the urgency of things like persecution and so on and so forth, people now were indoctrinated into not being serious with things like their lives, their families. It's in the north, you can see one man with five, six children staying in a small room and he tells you, look, what is the use of building a house? I saw a vision and I know that when Jesus comes, call me Banzane. You hear them say it. And they, they threaten your visionary attitude. Oh, I want to build a house. I want to do this. All those things are useless. When they the motto, when they buy the motto, yes, you also call me Banzane. And then we say those things. They look very nice. They look appealing. And they are responsible for the pain that many families, the pain that many churches, the pain and the decadence that happens in the society. Nobody takes responsibility over anything because we are saying, after all, Jesus is coming. The concept of Jesus is coming is not a concept that should stimulate indiscipline and unseriousness. Jesus is coming should ginger us to occupy that he comes to meet us as a, uh, as a faithful servant. This mistake was adumbrated in Matthew 25. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two. He gave unto the other one. The man with one talent is doing what we are doing. I know he's coming soon. There's no need wasting my time. When will I go and do business with this money? And he buried it. When Jesus came, he was prepared, waiting for his arrival. Whereas the rest were there trying to bring interest for the master. Are we together now? And then when he came, he now said, you, you are a hard man. You have been threatening me. I can't wait to give you this, your coin. Carry this, your nonsense and leave. What did Jesus call him? Wicked one, 
to unprofitable servant. And those who spend their time multiplying it, listen to what he told them. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. One of the synoptics says, I appoint to you kingdoms. That's the reward. Are we together? Jesus is coming soon. Should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of rapture should never threaten the dominion mandate. The consciousness of hell should never threaten the dominion mandate. The dominion mandate is not an antichrist mandate. Hey, look at me, church. The dominion mandate is not a mandate for ambitious people. Most people preach that the, the dominion mandate is for Pentecostals. So whenever we are talking about advancing the kingdom, they look at great people like our fathers, Bishop Oedeko and the rest, and say these people are just carnal. All they are thinking about is university. Jesus is coming soon. All they are thinking about is empowering people, prosperity, all this money money thing and you see bloggers writing in ignorance we made that mistake and now we are about losing almost all our missionary secondary schools because the missionaries that came and other orthodox ministries like catholic equa you know and all of that they built schools is that true they built hospitals that, that was a, a mindset of the dominion mandate Adv they permeated lands because of the medical aid they could bring to people so although they did not like their gospel they still gave them land and gave them space today we are losing this and there are no good schools again you cannot trust a school where your child will be trained properly the mission schools no longer have money and support you know why because those to support them said no we are closer to rapture there is no need supporting you let us just wait jesus is coming many of us here are already having that mindset it must change tonight being rapture compliant is not running away from responsibility and sitting down to say oh let me make sure i don't talk no he comes to meet you like that he calls you an unprofitable servant are we blessed we are going to pray i wish i had time we will continue next week the gift of righteousness righteousness like kenyon would say um, would define he calls it the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of inferiority and condemnation as i've learned about righteousness i found out is deeper than that revelation is progressive you know that kenyon died long ago are we together if kenyon were still alive he would have upgraded a lot of things righteousness is not just the ability to stand before the father righteousness is the very nature of god god's nature are we together not just doing right God's nature, his rightness before the Father is what was imparted upon us. Listen, there is nobody who is qualified to execute the dominion mandate if you do not carry the righteousness of God. The Bible calls us now the righteousness of God. That's why he calls it a gift. Everybody say it is a gift. Say it again, it's a gift. Now every gift God gives you, you use those gifts to produce fruits. Read the Bible. Gifts go with fruits. Gifts, fruits gift fruit the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the gift of the spirit is god's benevolence to you the fruit of the spirit is a product of your own alignment it is your own participation in the equation there is the gift of righteousness there is the fruit of righteousness the outworkings of righteousness hallelujah listen the first thing any believer needs is to possess the gift of righteousness it is only the gift of righteousness that authorizes the holy spirit to come upon you listen you cannot have the holy spirit without the gift of righteousness it's impossible there are progressions the first thing that must happen to a man to be able to reign in life is to be born of a woman you have to be born of a woman that's what authorizes you to wear a body the second thing that must happen to you is rebirth regeneration from the word regime please make sure you're writing this down the first thing that must happen to you is your natural birth 
everyone born of a woman comes with the nature of the first Adam the fallen nature the nature of the first Adam is the nature that is corrupted is the nature that is called sin sin is not just something you do sin is a nature that comes to every man he said in sin did my mother conceive me the true concept of sin is not the things that are done the true concept of sin is a nature that is inherent in you that compels you to be a slave to it and then execute a lot of things so the first thing that must happen to any man is birth the second is rebirth 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 what is rebirth an impartation of the nature and the image of christ in that man hallelujah these are realities of redemption that we must know in order to execute the dominion mandate the bible says this let me tell you what the bible says we're rounding up give give me please give me first peter chapter 1 verse 23 i think 22 23 first peter chapter 1 22 23 um, i'm looking for one I'm, I'm sure it's one of those verses first peter being born again being born again everybody listen this born again thing is a big deal being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god which liveth and abided forever being born again or being saved as we call it it's not just some oh god oh god i give you my heart i give you my heart i am your child i am your child amen amen and they say congratulations you are now a child of god take a little hamper a little tape in it and a little biscuit and you are no 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 that, that's not it at all being born again is a supernatural event listen that's why you must make sure everyone around you has that experience it is the condition to fulfill the dominion mandate the Bible says that only those who have received the gift of righteousness and then the abundance of grace shall by that one man, that mediator of the new covenant, Jesus himself. The foundation of our work in the kingdom, the foundation of the restructuring for the dominion mandate starts with Jesus. The pattern man, the portrait, Jesus himself. The Bible says looking up to him, he is the epicenter of this dominion mandate he is the epicenter of the entire life of the believer whenever we talk kingdom whenever we talk of anything the epicenter of what we call the faith life now is jesus you begin to trace your compass from him whenever you draw any bearing outside of the christ that whatever it is that you are constructing is already in error christ is the standard we start with him and we begin to navigate our path through this kingdom life it starts in christ that's why the bible says the first qualification is a regeneration comes from the word regene because every man born of a woman is carrying a spiritual gene of the first adam the fallen nature you do not have to commit any physical sin anyone who is not a possessor of righteousness cannot be in heaven cannot be in heaven the only not exception to this that i've seen from bible are babies why because their wills have not been developed for them to make a choice that's why there are no babies in hell whoever has a vision with babies in hell did not go to hell he went somewhere else are we together now yes the gift of righteousness do you have that gift it's a gift it's a gift pastor i give you a gift as with any gift it must be received that is a gift you receive it you can receive it this is the foundation i give it to you you receive it i give you can reject it that's why the bible says as many as received him gave he them the power to become to become to become the power to become so when you receive him the power to become is given to you they that are possessors so when you have received Christ by faith truly in your heart you can dare to say together with all the saints that I am part of the brethren I have a right to call Abba father I have
have a right to call Abba Father. He is not just your father. He is not just the God of Joshua Selman. That's a different dimension. He is now our father. That's why Paul can say about the family in heaven and on earth. We are now one big family. Under the same Lord. Under the same faith. Under the same baptism. Paul was teaching. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. We have been immersed into the same experience. The foundation, please hear me, is not impartation. Impartation cannot give you the gift of righteousness. Healing cannot give you the gift of righteousness. Teaching all the principles that I teach you on success and all of that, as important as they are, they cannot give you the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness is freely given. The custodian, the authorized entity that can guarantee its release to you is Jesus the Christ. His office is exclusively responsible for handling eternal life. Handling the gift of righteousness. The Holy Spirit is only an enforcer. He comes with respect in honor to your believing Jesus. You don't believe the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of righteousness. No. You don't believe the Father and receive the gift of righteousness. The same way it is not the VC signature that is on your admission letter. It is the registrar. But it's not the highest authority. It is his office. Is that true? So the office of the Christ is responsible for allocating this. When you stand and believe his report, that message the reward for believing it is that the Christ authorizes the Spirit of God to come to you. So when you come out for an altar call, you don't know how supernatural what it is you are doing. You don't feel anything physically. You stand and heaven is watching. The sun is watching. Lord Jesus, I believe in this. I believe in that. And while you are saying it, Jesus vets the sincerity of your confession. And on grounds of that truth, the spirit of God comes into your life representing eternal life and in that instant whether you feel clean or not the Bible tells us like Joshua the high priest in Zechariah that that gift of righteousness is given to you the gift of righteousness is your past is your qualification it opens you up to the potentials of manifesting this dominion mandate the other dimension we'll look at is in subsequent series the abundance of grace abundance on grace another word is grace upon grace because there is saving grace that is a seed given to you as God's benevolence but it does not stop there that grace is nurtured through knowledge and understanding grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace becomes abundant as you access knowledge so in other words there are two things that you must possess the gift of righteousness and access to knowledge access to knowledge that grants you the privilege to be able to reign God is counting on us to fulfill this mandate God is counting on us when that rebirth happens to us as believers what then is the next step the next step after rebirth is discipleship write the word down we have abused that word discipleship discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is the way believers are trained to reign discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's code of operation discipleship is not an induction into a denomination's belief system discipleship is the system where believers are trained to reign what is happening right now in koinonia is discipleship the word has become so ugly most people don't even want to hear it because for many people discipleship means under some kind of stringent religious system submitting under all sorts of things no we need discipleship it is God's system where ordinary believers are now trained on the matters of the kingdom 
trained to understand the precepts of, of the kingdom and this is why God gave apostles this is why God gave prophets listen this is why God gave evangelists are you seeing where we now come into the equation we were never there from beginning the apostolic ministry the prophetic ministry as we know it now is not an eternal ministry they are not eternal no Jesus is not in heaven today just as our apostle no when he sat upon that throne we still call him the apostle of our faith but his ministry now number one is lord number two is an as an intercessor the bible says he makes intercession for the saints even if i prophesy the bible says it will end is that true even prophecies will end even tongues will end so a day will come when god will look at us and say pastor alpha come well done good and faithful servant i put you over destiny makers international and you walked with them you did a great job i see the devils that you casted i see the sick bodies you have done well well done enter into the rest there is a new assignment that is going to be given to you a day will come god will look at me and say apostle oh joshua selma he won't call me apostle <laughs> whatever he calls me he's right <laughs> hallelujah and then he will congratulate me and say well done for the labor they laughed at you but you continued you served and when they are doing it some of you who laughed at me will be watching that will be such a gallant ceremony this is what will happen in heaven and while that handshake is going on well done good and faithful servant we are smiling in glory and rejoicing we have conquered life we occupied well till he came and he says because of the tv station you people set up we have here in the record in heaven over one billion souls came because of this television ministry ah. surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus you know that song i can only imagine some of you let me tell you what will happen in heaven you will stand you are happy you got there but you will be ashamed i hope you know there's shame in heaven oh yes go and read your bible there is you stand no souls no partnership no blessing you gossiped and said everything the gift of righteousness brought you to heaven well done and there are, you will see men who were slaughtered like animals men who they did all kinds of things you will see them there age 33 standing there happy because 33 is the standard right and you will see them stand and the matthias crown will be put on them all kinds of people and you will stand there no crown no applause because you just said jesus is coming the the old hymn we used to sing only remembered for what we have done remember that hymn yes we must train believers to reign we don't train believers to become our church members pastors you don't train believers so that i can get church members this member consciousness is destroying god's dominion mandate God's idea is not to have a pile of weak people looking at a superhuman human being called Apostle Joshua Selman and every Sunday the man of God is here. God's idea is that he uses men called gifts to prepare the believers to reign. Are we together? The next dimension after reigning is called governance. God begins to apportion dimensions apportions mountains fairs of influence that represents his desire and the people you have now trained and are still training are now allowed to begin to occupy these dimensions this is god's idea being a church member for 10 years and not doing anything for god no soul winning no building institutions that advance the agenda of god is a total waste of time that may be religion that may be christianity in court but that's not kingdom hallelujah we're going to pray our time is up i gave this illustration 
to help you understand that when he said have dominion the idea is not outshining people the idea is understanding that the gift of righteousness alongside the abundance of grace that is supplied on the strength of knowledge access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the systems of god empower you to now begin to occupy occupy does not mean build a house for yourself occupy does not mean buy a jeep listen carefully occupy does not mean um um carry all kinds of Gucci, designers, Louis Vuitton, and all of those things are only the fringe benefits. Are we together? They are to be able to create an ample condition for you to be effective. So, you don't rejoice and say, look, I am enjoying. Why? Look at my house. Look at five cars. Look at ten shoes. Look at trips abroad. And you put them like crowns. Whoever talks like that does not know God and does not understand the dominion mandate. So my pride and your pride is not in our cars. Have the cars, but that's not the pride. The pride is not that you are now wearing a hair of 250,000. That is useless if it did not help you advance the kingdom. Your pride is that God gave me money and I worked the systems of the kingdom because I understood I would be a kingdom financier and I used that money I sponsored a TV station that now created a platform for people to receive Jesus for people to rise for people to be built I built a university that was able to empower people they were agents of national transformation at the same time addicts for God I was able to raise a school of ministry that mentored and guided people and they became firebrand apostles apostles and pastors this is kingdom check what you celebrate there are things that are worth celebrating part you at the back but that is not it doesn't make any sense in the spirit i have 10 estates nonsense truly speaking i have 30 shoes nonsense if i don't balance this many of us are on the way to destruction because this is what we call Christianity. We come and jump around and say, my faith is working. Why? I have 30 suits. Look at my picture with the owner of so, 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 and so oil company. And you gather them around and live your entire life. While you are old, you just say, you know, I lived a successful life. That's a wasted life. A life of purpose and a life of meaning. It's a life that contributes to fulfilling the dominion mandate. What is it? Take charge. What is it? expose creation to who i am and what i am and i've taught you that the dominion mandate is twofold one establishing christ in the hearts of men you must establish christ in the hearts of men that's why soul winning is non-negotiable please hear me if you are a christian and you are not winning souls god is not happy with your efficiency there is something wrong winning souls is not for preachers winning souls is your contribution to giving more space for people to know him love him and to extend his influence the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor the more and more we find people who love jesus and surrender their hearts to him and the more we can permeate our environment with the ideology we'll talk about that next week of the kingdom we are fulfilling the dominion mandate now that you are born again apostle i don't know what to do return back to the dominion mandate now that you have received the, the gift of righteousness contend for the abundance of grace how does it come grace and peace comes through knowledge multiplication through knowledge access it takes a long time the bible says you don't just reign with grace that grace must be lavish it must be in abundance that means you must be a bank of knowledge you must be a bank of understanding you must be a compendium of kingdom mysteries and on the strength of those mysteries you reign rise up on your feet We are going to pray three prayer points very quickly tonight. Prayer point number one. Lord, restore me. Listen. Lord, I don't like the way my life has been. 
I've been living my life. All I think about is food to eat, wife to marry, husband to marry, children to have. Let me just complete my education. And some of you are obsessed about marriage, obsessed about children, as if these things in themselves, obsessed about cars. Oh Lord, you have to give me a Jeep before August. And God is saying, come on, come on, come on. I'm bigger than that. You can't be on earth just for Jeeps. There is a higher and a nobler call. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, re realign my life to the dominion mandate. Realign my life. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside your gifts are only useful when they are aligned to the dominion mandate and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion and he gave them dominion dominion over principalities and powers dominion over systems and structures dominion to legislate dominion to administrate hallelujah i'll be teaching you this next week but we can still pray lord this dominion mandate is complex. Where is my own part? Show me. Lift your voice and cry. Where is my own part? We all have roles to play. That's what we call our assignments. That's what we call purpose. Are you praying? Lord, I'm tired of living a useless life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Show me. Show me. Show me. Reveal to me the blueprint. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. The last prayer point for tonight lord prioritize my life take away distractions keep me focused on the things that really matter the things that have eternal value lift your voice and pray take away distractions take away distractions let me not major on the minors let me not major on the minors Take away distraction from my church. Take away distraction from my fellowship. Take away distraction. I want my life to be focused. 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 As I seek prosperity, as I seek cars, as I seek houses, as I seek influence, Lord, redirect my focus that these things do not distract me. That I will know they are only a means to an end. The end is fulfilling the dominion mandate. That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters the sea. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. I know our time is gone. I want you to pray and say, Lord, anything that has distracted me and has taken the place of this assignment, I pray that you restore, restore. Some of you, you are the way you look for money, the way you, you exaggerated it and God is out of money, money, money all the way. Money, cars, houses, children, marriage, whatever, job, job. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, cut away, cut away attachments, ungodly attachments, attachment to things, attachment to motives. Attachment to things, attachment to motives. Hallelujah. I'm making an altar call now. I told you that the first key the Bible recommends for reigning is the gift of righteousness. 
without jesus you are not born again even if you have a christian name there are people here truthfully speaking i want you to be honest with yourself tonight inside outside any of the overflows and those online as you are hearing me the spirit of god is ministering to you and saying you truly need to make your way right you don't inherit salvation and there are those who are saying i need to rededicate my life i was never taught this way i just thought that everything is just to live fear fear go to church on sunday wherever you are our time is gone i'm going to count one to four please clear the way for them i want you to come out it will be my joy to lead you to jesus christ somebody needs to come out celebrate them they are coming please clear the way for them outside are you coming run run and join them keep coming we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh keep coming too if they are coming from outside clear the way for them we look to Yahweh Yahweh forever Yahweh is redirecting people's focuses many of you will go back and begin to have dreams and god will say you are not supposed to be here you are wasting your time be here this is the place of your call the place of grace the place of relevance those who are standing i want you to lift your right hand i salute your courage every one of you i want you to mean business don't stand here just to recite a poem say it sincerely you are about to receive the gift of righteousness say lord jesus I believe in you I have come before you and before your people to receive the life of God to receive the gift of righteousness so that I will reign right now I believe you are the son of God I believe you died for me I believe you rose from the dead I receive your life I declare that I'm a possessor of eternal life i receive the gift of righteousness and i declare that i begin to reign over sicknesses over limitations over satan and all the powers of the enemy from today i declare that i'm a child of god and i continue to grow and i continue to flourish in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted jesus thank you thank you because they are possessors of the gift of righteousness therefore i stand before god's people and i declare tonight that the gift of righteousness is given to you i declare that your sins are forgiven i declare that you will never be the same in the name of jesus the power of sin the power of satan the power of the flesh is broken over your life forever we supply grace for you in the name of jesus and i declare that you will begin to go from glory to glory in the name of jesus congratulations ladies and gentlemen i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you please follow that gentleman um, take the guy under the anointing god bless you i salute your courage let's clap for them koinonia